All right, so it's been a while since we've since we've done this, um, and it was you know the holidays hit, and then you know Micah thought it was nice to start up another business um, with my sister called the Drip Bar. Anybody who's here's the here's the new coasters. <laughs> yeah, and Micah's eating a, b- a banana. Um, so I was hungry. I haven't eaten. I I I wanted to. You know, we've been talking about you know coming back for for a couple like probably like six weeks now. And I wanted to come back and uh, kind of give an education to people, you know, uh, about some things that are happening around them. So with us today is a is a good man named George Juhas. George, nice to see you. Thank you very and much. Good I'm to gonna, be here. I'm going to give a little backstory on, on you is that um, you and I have a mutual acquaintance. Um my very, very dear friend is dating your daughter. Please don't kill him. That's right. Um, he's a good man. Um, and he hit me up and he said, he said, uh, he said, Hey, I think, I think you, you, you could help, uh, my girlfriend's dad. And he connected you and I, and then I went up and met with you at a Perkins That's right. in Tunkhannock. And I think I was there for four hours. <laughs> it felt like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I leave and I come back here and I tell these guys about meeting you. And I'm like, I'm like, my mind is spinning. It feels like I'm in like a, a, a cement mixer because yeah. of all the things that you, you told me. And I obviously, you know, somebody like me who has to go back and say, what of what he said could not be true. Right. And it seemed like what I can look into probably 99.9% of it minus the 0.01% things I couldn't figure out whether or not they were true or not. Uh, it just blew my mind. So can you um, tell us a little bit about your background? So you're a veteran, That's right? right? Yes. And, and where did you serve? So I served uh, just over a year with the Army. I was a 19 Delta, which would have been a mechanized infantry. Uh, the Marine Corps wouldn't take me when I was 17. So as I was leaving the Marine Corps office, an army guy was outside. He heard what was happening. <laughs> so we'll he, take you. he put his arm around me. and Was before, that because of your age? Uh, my age, yeah. Okay. The Marine Corps wouldn't take you at eight, until you're 18. So, uh, so then I wound up at Fort Knox, Kentucky for training there. And then we were getting ready to deploy to the first Gulf War. And there were some numbers given of like 100,000 were going to die on the first day because of their minefields. I thought, God, I can't die in the army. I said, I got, if I'm going to die, I got to die a Marine because my father was a Marine. Mm. You know, And I always had plans in my mind, okay, I'll, I'll do a couple years with the army and I'll switch over to the Marine Corps. But as soon as I got that death toll given to me, I, I ran to my congressman who luckily was an ex-Marine. And I said, I'm not trying to get out of the army. I just want to join the Marines. I can't die in the army. You know? Right. So uh, he, I, I remember him calling me one night. I got, I got to go. He goes, you got to be down here now. And I just got finished. You know, I was cleaning the blood off my hands because I was just cleaning a deer. I, I harvested it. And he's like, got to go now. So I'm completely covered, barely get cleaned up enough to get down to the MEP station to get sworn in, sworn out of the army, sworn into the Marine Corps. Next morning, I had to have my stuff brought to me because they wouldn't let me go. Because the next morning I was on a, a bus heading down to Paris Island. Finished up all my training, caught up to the USS America. Uh, there was a ramp up to the war. So by the time I got through all my training with the Marine Corps, which I had to go to boot camp all over again, I wound up catching up to the USS America as it was going into the Suez Canal. And then once we got penetrated the Suez Canal, and then we were in the Gulf, uh, the first Gulf War. So how's the weather there? <laughs> Yeah, the weather is, uh, it, it takes about six days to acclimate. So typically you're offshore um, exercising on the uh, flight decks of the, uh, the ship so you can feel the humidity. And I can remember the first time we hit, you know, no matter how hard we trained, we would fight all day long, do all kinds of training to get your heart rate up, to feel the humidity and feel the pressure of the heat on you. And I can still remember once we hit the ground, we literally had to leave our, leave our flak jackets. We had to lose so much gear because you just couldn't move. You just felt like you were in a, in a 12 round fist fight with, uh, you know, George Foreman. You just couldn't move. It was so much energy was sucked out of you. Just from the heat. Just from the heat. And, and then, you know, potentially we didn't have enough time to acclimate. That's the only thing we could think of. But I can remember putting everybody on their knees, like strip the gear. We got to go. Cause we went in there all bulked up with Kevlar's and flak jackets. We had to take it all off and put it on our backpack so we can breathe. 
And that was like desert. Was that Desert Shield or Desert Storm at the in time? The, in the very beginning, it was actually liberating Kuwait, and then it would have went into the Shield. So, yeah. so when did you when did you get out of the Marines? How long were you in the Marines? I just stayed in for four years. I can remember. I came back. I went to Iraq. Then went to Somalia. Uh, that was just right. Is that like around, Black Hawk Down days. That was Black Hawk. That's what we were there for to get the army out. So once we got them out, um, quite frankly, I can remember giving them all of our equipment to get them out to our ships because you couldn't land C one thirties because they were so close to the airport that they can get shot down with the uh, just simple RPGs because everything was getting overrun. And I can remember giving up all of our equipment to let the army guys get out to our ships and then they would get relocated. I'm like, well, how do we get back? <laughs> you know, cause it's a 12 mile swim. Right. So I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, there's no way cause we have so much gear. We're not going to make it. So they start burning and dumping gear. And then one morning you can feel it in your chest. You know, the same guy that evacuated uh, Saigon was now obviously a higher ranking officer and he actually evacuated uh, the airport out of Mogadishu because it was basically being overrun. And you could just feel it that morning we were told get to the, we had to go to our, our post with all of our gear and that's a lot of gear. And uh, we didn't know what was happening, but sure enough, like 30 helicopters came over all dropped at the same time. And it's a lot of pressure, a lot of sand. And as we're lifting I can still remember this one uh, Somalian boy that we used to um, take care of. And he was kind of like a snitch for them. He spoke English. His dad used to be the mayor. And uh, his name, we called him Sammy. It was like Samuel or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we couldn't leave. We had to leave him behind. The Pakistan, I'm sorry, Palestinians were still, no, I'm sorry. Pakistanis were still there. The Israelis were still there. And they were, they were leaving some other way. Not, they weren't leaving with us. So we were afraid he was going to get killed because he gave up so much information throughout the time. So we thought he was in good hands, but he didn't want to stay. So he tried to get on the helicopter with us and everybody just started screaming. No one knew what was going on, but everybody, the helicopter uh, relanded. We had to get out and create circle, you know, a defensive circle thinking that we're, it was too bad. They were overrunning. It was just one little kid trying to come home with us, you know? And he actually got to the back of the helicopter and, and the gunnies got him and the palace, uh, the Pakistanis are taking them. He's like, Oh, what to do? Cause we know that the Pakistanis, you know, really aren't our friends over there, you know? Right. But, um, it created quite a hubbub, but we wound up having to leave them. We couldn't take them, but either way, the excitement was that many helicopters at one time lift an entire, you know, group of Marines out of there and other, whatever Americans were left behind. There were some state department people that had to leave also. And that was like what? 93. That was around 93. Yeah. And it's interesting that like, what, Less than it, let, it, yeah. like Afghanistan kind of seems like it was that way too. Yeah. Which is sad. Well, why, why is it? I mean, you know, we all, I, I was too young to know about that in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was only what 11 years old when that happened. Um, why is it that it seems like we're not very good at leaving these war zones around the world? Uh, if I had to say something about that, is we took over an entire uh, airfield that wasn't well protected. So we, it had to be protected on foot. And uh, the C-130s, like the, the heavier equipment, it's, it's the bigger, clumsier um, militaries. Like I'll be, all my friends, uh, I have friends across all the militaries. The smaller you are, the easier it is to move around, mm. you know, when you're big and clumsy. Because I can remember we took uh, a swim ashore to find out where we were going to set up our bivouac. And I saw some old air force uh, bunks that got left behind and they had air conditioning being pumped into them. I'm like, I'll take that gunny, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we all got ashore and I'm like, just over this knoll guys, just over this knoll. And I got over to know, I'm like, where's the tents? Everything is gone. You know, everything was gone. They're like, you said there was AC. I'm, just, I'm like, there was AC guys. I'm telling you, <laughs> it was right there. You could see the the square uh, yeah. wood still left on the ground, but those people got to pack that up and drag that out of there. And again, if, if their momentum has shifted, you know, we get to leave, put it this way. I carried a tent. It's called the half shelter in my backpack, my entire Marine Corps. So I was a boat platoon. So I went in on a rubber Zodiac. That's what, that was our, most of our, our transportation. So once you get in there, that's all you have is what's on your back. You know, there's, there's not a lot of support. And if you need it, you can call it in. But in fact, I carried that damn thing for years and I never deployed it. You know, it's because we don't, I'd rather sleep under a bush than deploy mm -hmm. that stupid thing. You know, because all that time taken to clean it up or whatever, you just kind of keep on going. So 
it's we are light on our feet the other units other other uh, military you know the army the air force are so big it's clumsy you know they all have their smaller units built inside of them that we can relate to but marine corps generally is just small so it's very mm-hmm. mobile so i would say that if in fact it's not um it's america's problem when they start overloading a war zone with a lot of stuff and then a lot of stuff has to leave or not leave and quite frankly it's good for business leaving your stuff there because now we have now we need more stuff right the mm. entire oh. military industrial complex you know so we need new things because we don't have those things anymore oops yeah. Yeah. it seems like it, it seems like a, a i a, mean it's a brilliant business a model. purposeful oops yeah. i can remember ours was burning when we left so our piles were burning <clears throat> we, didn't, we didn't leave it for them i can still remember looking down in hindsight right so war uh i think it was there was a walking dead movie of some sort war uh, war war z world oh, war, war z yeah yeah, yeah. with and brad with brad pitt yeah it was, you, it was decent do you remember them coming up over, the, over wall? the wall yeah yeah so i'm telling you i seen that firsthand where it was somalians coming up over the wall and i can't confirm or deny that the israelis were using 50 cows to push them back because that would not be ethical because they're supposed to not use those on people they're only supposed to use on the vehicles but Maybe they were shooting over their heads to scare them. I'm not sure. But in fact, their guns were going off to try to hold that back because that wave could have easily got to us. And that we knew that was their goal, was to make it look like they pushed us out of there mm. in a great firefight. The Marines retreated, mm. you know? <clears throat> so in fact, um, the Israelis were trying to put down that, um, what would have been, if you would have, social media was around back then, they were trying to, to erase that possibility of that was the picture. Wow. It's amazing to me that that's, that that scene from World War Z <coughs> is possible in the real world. Yeah, they were climbing up over each other. I can remember I was near the wall using it again, uh, Air Force or Army. They had phones and uh, you, you called in to be like, hey, mom, over. Hey, son, over. You know, and that's the way we were communicating back then. And um, so they, we ha- we had an open mic or an open line at the time, and we're going back and forth now. Once we realized I was connected and she was connected, and it was being, if you would, um, monitored by an operator to make sure we didn't give up, you know, any locations or whatever. And all of a sudden, that first night we got attacked, and the wall was two hundred feet, you know, to my side. Explosions go off, drop the phone. All I have is one mag, and one guy. And oh no, my barracks is like way down the way. So we just take off running. I left that phone swinging. And so my family can hear all that's happening in the background before they got the line cut, you know, and I never thought to go back and say, Hey, I got to go. <laughs> and I just took oh, off, you know? Wow. So I, ne- they never let me live that down. But at, at, the, at the time, in fact, they were trying to muscle everybody together and trying to hold the phone, you know, so everybody can kind of hear and hear, talk, yeah. you know, cause again, 20 years mm-hmm. ago, we didn't have all the, all the high tech phones. So my mother never lets me live that down that I let that phone swing for yeah. a while. Thanks for letting me swing. I mean, I mean, they don't know. What, that's the worst thing to hear is to hear something happening oh, and yeah. you don't know what's going on. Yeah, it was, we were told it was going to happen. We just didn't know when it was going to happen, you know, because we had a lot of informants, you know, already in, inside of Somalia for a while. But I can remember running down with my buddy and, and you can see, it looks like it's raining in front of us, but in fact, the bullets were mushrooming off of the cargo containers and dropping and and it was just dropping metal after it hits because we typically have some type of protection you know from getting shot from the city right. and as we're running you can see this look like it's hail but it's not it's not hail it's just lead being dropped off of the, the towers Jeez, man and there's only two of us so i got back and everybody's foaming at the mouth ready to go like what are we doing corporal us what are we doing i'm like just let me get my gear on you know yeah. just couldn't do nothing so Go tell my family I'm okay. How, yeah. how, how old were you at this time? Uh, this probably would have been 19 or 20. Jeez, yeah. man. I have a 19 year old son. I don't, I don't, think, I don't, I don't think he'd I be okay with this. I don't think he'd be good in this situation. <laughs> so I, I, want, I wanted to give context to your background. I want to put a plug in if you don't mind. Plug it. So great grandpa was a Marine. Pop was a Marine. My father. I was a Marine and my son just signed up for the Marine Corps. Oh, that's right. They did a ceremony last week, didn't yeah, they? That's yeah, right, yeah. And uh, I never flew the Marine Corps flag at my house, never had a sign that said Marine Corps on my shirt. I, I just wanted to be low key about it. He's my only son, so I didn't want to f- influence him or pressure him. Uh, it was going to be what it was going to be. Same thing with me as I was uh, growing up. So he made his decision, you know, <laughs> no, matter, no matter how much I try and talk him out of it, I can't now. 
Right. You know, I told him, hey, go join the uh, the National Guard or go jo- be a, a Marine Reservist. I'm doing everything I can. Yeah, to Coast Guard. Keep him out of the harm's mm-hmm. way, right? Because just moving man and machine across the country causes death. Just, it's very unfortunate, but we, we've lost them just simply moving equipment, you know? Mm-hmm. So he says, Dad, you told me that the reservists were pussies. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> I'm like, I did say that, son. I'm sorry. <laughs> so now, now I came back to hunt. Me. Yeah. I was like, dang. So, okay, that, that's not going to work, right? right. So, yeah. Uh, the other night he was working out. He went to the gym. At, like, he goes to the gym at like 11 o'clock at night with some buddies. Doesn't get home till like one in the morning, you know. And then um, he has, he's been doing basketball playoffs. And I'm like, maybe you can avoid that, you know, that one workout. Because if you're going to wear yourself out and during this playoff game, what if you need one extra inch of height? to get over somebody in the fourth, in the fourth quarter, you know, the fourth period. I said, just relax, you know, save your energy. He goes, ah, he goes, just like you said, you know, it's one thing to run 10 miles, but to run 10 miles after you drank all night and smoke cigarettes, it's way different, right? It's a bigger, <laughs> it's a bigger deal. So he's like, nah, I'll go to gym. I'll be all right. I'm like, are you sure? He goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, I can run, drink and smoke. Don't worry. And he was just using my, <laughs> yeah, again, you're, you're, an old analogy. Right. So now he's throwing these all back at me. Yeah. So. But he luckily had decided and got a spot that opened up to be a force recon. So force recon, in my opinion, a good explanation is, you know how we have all these trail, de- trail uh, train derailments and stuff. So in fact, we want to go. See, it seems it seems lately there's a lot of them. Yeah. It yeah. Seems, so if we were. If we a were, lot of national oopsies. Yeah. If we, in fact, wanted to cause chaos inside of a country prior to going in, you want to try and mess up their infrastructure a little bit. And our force recon Marines would be the ones helping these oopsies that happen in other countries, you know, and start setting a stage, prepare right. the battlefield. So at the end of the day, my son's going to be in very good hands. He'll be around tons of professionals, you know, uh, not to say that Marine infantry isn't a ton of professionals, but these guys are going to be at another level. They're coming in high altitude ocean, you know, they're coming in, in very little, very little uh, leeway for screwing up. Yeah. They're not going to make a dust cloud. We make a dust cloud when we come, right? So right. We're, we're heavy infantry. These guys aren't going to make a dust cloud. These guys are going to, and plus the high tech equipment they have, every insertion and extraction today is so much different. You know, the only thing I ask them to do is always try to stay alive and head West. You know, that's all you got to do. Cause if, you know, if you ever get broken up, it's one thing to be broken up. I was broken up from my unit probably two or three times. I remember it's pretty scary. And, um, and then you're like, Oh my God, what do you do? <laughs> you, don't, you, you know, you literally don't have a compass, right? Right. right with you. you have to go digging for it. You got to start thinking which way you're going to go. Where's my extraction spot? A lot of this is predetermined, you know. So one of my biggest advice is now that I know he's going is now I, I get to talk shop with him. I never wanted to really talk shop with him before, but now he's made his choice. I might get my Marine Corps tattoo finally. One of the jobs I had, I couldn't have any tattoos, so I, right. I didn't do tattoos. But now I'm, I'm prepared to support and back my son 100%. Not that I, I wouldn't before, but now that he's picked the, the Marine Corps, I got to back him 100%. But now I want him to survive, you know, I just, so just, I, I've even, if he hears this fine, but I, I told him, I said, well, maybe you could just become the best at what you do and they'll make you a trainer. I said, that's, there's something proud about that two hands going in the battle versus 2000. So if you prepare 2000 men for battle because you were so good at what you did, you now train other people. There's, there's pride in that. There's, you should be proud of that, you know? So I'm trying to get him to become a trainer. Like if he's going to do it, do it so good that they keep you as a trainer and like they don't drop you into these places. Yeah. My, my uncle was, uh, first of all, uh, you know, we, we need more people like you mm. and, and your son <clears throat> and your son. Yeah. And I remember, um, I remember I, I, my, my, my uncle was in the army and I remember my mother was, uh, my mom, my mother was telling me stories, uh, during the pandemic about like what it was like at that time with like the draft and you didn't know who was going to go. And then you had parents calling up state reps and Congress people and whatever, just to make sure their kid didn't go. And, you know, for you to have the perspective of that, of what it was like in a combat situation, you could be able to impart that on your son is yeah. kind of why I wanted to start with you telling me about your history, because what that does is that gives you perspective for the conversation, gives the people perspective for the conversation that I want to have with you. Right. So uh, another thing that I want to add to this is that, so the time frame that I was in, I was a young man and I was a Marine. I was, I was a young infantry Marine, right? So you're, I'm in a combat role as a young man in the Marines. If you ask me at the day one, after being done, being active service, 
was that what you're supposed to do? I would have thought that that's exactly what every Marine was doing. But we were very unfortunate to have a terrible set of presidents who didn't grow our military. So we kept getting redeployed. So I had two years and nine months out of four years in combat zones, in, co in hostile environments. Nobody should ever have to do that. So in hindsight, I have to look back. My, my mother was trying to think possibly I had PTSD, right? I don't know what, 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 what she, mothers think they know better. So yeah. she, she calls my uncle, who also was a Marine, and he started quizzing me. And so I'm like, yeah, guys, I'm all right. I'm not broken, right? So I'm thinking broken, missing arms, missing parts. You know, I have a buddy that my neighbor went to the Marine Corps because I influenced them um, amongst other things probably. But you know, he directly, you know, thanks me for getting him in there. But he has one eye. He says he's ripped apart. He didn't survive an explosion. So it's hard for me to want to claim anything when this, when I, I live next door to somebody who potentially I influenced to you know, put it out there. But at the end of the day, he made his own choice, right? right. And he's proud of his, his decision and he'll, he'll never, he'll never not be proud of what he did. I'm proud of everything I did for what I knew what I was doing. I was super proud of that. And I would do it all again at that knowledge point. The things mm -hmm. I know now, you know, the difference between, uh, let's say geographical America and corporate America, I have to ask myself, like, I fear my son um, being involved in corporate wars. That bothers me tremendously. Right. So I pray to God he survives all together, everything. That's all we can do now. He, he made his choice. Now we just pray that he gets home to us. I, I, I've been a heathen a lot longer than I've been a Christian. And I'm glad it's coming to me now because now I got my son stepping off. And uh, it's really important that, um, that he comes home. You know? So that's all I can do now is just pray. I can give him as much advice as I can. But you know, the Marine Corps has changed so much. You know, it's only heading, uh, heading west and st wanting to stay alive is important. So no matter what the scenario hmm. So after Somalia, you know, we come to the Mediterranean, Libya was, was trouble, Bosnia was happening, right? So Iraq, Somalia, Bosnia, we come home from one day, we unload the ship, got off the USS Trenton. One day later, they have us back in formation, checking our travel papers because we're home, we're supposed to go to Liberty. One day later, they took our travel papers, not to see, make sure you went home, because typically they want to make sure everybody is going home or they're going to have a job on base. Nobody's going to sit in the barracks and drink and cause trouble. Right. Well, they took our papers and they pointed us back to the USS Trenton. So we were home one day and they put us back in the USS Trenton to go to uh, Haiti because nobody was ramped up and ready to go to Haiti. So you have to have certain qualifications. You got to have every boat space. They called it full. So that means a full boat space. If this, in fact, so they use it as an example, but if this was a Zodiac and there's a missing man right here, this boat can't leave until that gets filled. That was a Colin Powell thing. And he didn't want anything to happen like in Vietnam where you're sending green troops out there and they're getting killed coming off the helicopters. You know, he wanted them to have their training. They have so many hours in the air, so many hours in the rifle range. They wanted so many hours in country other than combat zones. And then once you qualify all those things, you in fact can fill a boat space. So now this, this boat can launch. That's the way, and it was, it's a good theory. I love the theory. So nobody was ever ready, but because we were in combat zones from Iraq to Somalia, Bosnia. You know, Bosnia so now it's like, Hey, these guys are the only ones ready. Nobody else is ready. And that's fair. Cause whoever went probably would have got chopped up. So we were the, the most prepared. So we went, so looking back at it, it's not normal to have to go through all that to, to, to constantly, you know, have, if you would survivors guilt because not everybody makes it right. So now, and we shouldn't have had so many, um, in, in conflicts for a certain unit. We were the energizer by the energizer bunny was our logo. Like the guys on the ship created uh, shirts for us back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it was the energizer bunny that was dressed up as a Marine. Cause he just kept going and going and going, you know, I was third battalion, six Marines, um, off of the USS Trenton and the USS America. So, you know, it's easy for people to want to go say, hey, where were they during these times? But my point is this, that there's probably not another, I can't think, and I didn't do that much research, but when I realized how many people died in Iraq and how many people died in Somalia, Bosnia and Haiti, you know, these were genocidal areas. This was just, I can remember cleaning the roof of my mouth off so I can eat my food. So you get the flavor of death off your roof of your mouth. So you can you know, eat, eat a decent meal, you know, or the fumes or the smells, whatever was around you. 
So if, if they weren't directly at my hands, there was just so much death around that young Marine that he didn't, if he would deserve, but he took the job on and he thought this was what every Marine was experiencing. But in fact, it's, it's not what everyone's going to experience. I had a friend who had a downstairs um, memorial of his 25 years of service. And I look around and he has swords, he has everything. And I'm thinking, holy cow, this is some good stuff. I says, where were you? He goes, never left the States, never fired my weapon in anger. So he was a good trainer, you know? So there's, there's my plot. Mm -hmm. There's my plot comes in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a jump master. So they couldn't risk losing him so that he needed to train other jumpers, you know, uh, you know, para jumpers and stuff. So, so, uh, but you would think, you know, that he, 25 years, never fired his weapon in anger, you know, and here's a young Marine. Every place I step off, you know, is some place where, where you can die or you walk into death, you know? So, so mm. to, and we complain. Mm. I have no complaints right now. Okay, good. Dan, <laughs> I, I, I think I have a pretty good life over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it gets a little sketchy for me sometimes at work, you know, like oh, there, at, the, at the salon. Yeah. There might be yeah. a loose hairs on the floor. You know, it, not comparable, <laughs> not comparable. Yeah. Um, I, so let, let's just get into this, right? Yes. So because of your, because of your, most people don't have the life experiences that you have. I think mm -hmm. it's fair to say that the small majority of the world has experienced the things that you've experienced and have, and has the perspective mm -hmm. on, on the difference between life and death, liberty, subjugation, you know, you've experienced these things in the, in, in the ways that, you know, we, we would read about in magazines, newspapers, or watch on TV, right? right? So what I, I want to talk about rights. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, when COVID hit, you know, there's a lot of people that think now that like I'm a, a white supremacist conspiracy theorist, something like that. Conspiracy theorist for sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't have a hateful bone in my body except against, you know, people who hurt other people. Um, you're very well known in the Tunkhannock area as a, uh, what would you call yourself up there? <laughs> Probably a rebel rouser, you know, yeah. to my opposition, if you would, and a patriot. The, pe the, the people who don't know your story and what you stand for, yeah. they have assumptions. They make, they make assumptions <coughs> based off not really good evidence of yep. who you are as a human being. And they don't know what I know and they don't know what the school board, let's say is they don't know what they're doing. So, so you're, so you're up there basically trying to protect the citizens and the children of Tunkhannock's uh, area high school. Yep. So I would say this started this way when the pandemic happened. So I got wind that it's like six weeks from the time that they told us to the time that it actually got released. Now, remember, everywhere I went, I never fought against a Somalian rifle. Now, when you say told us released, what does that mean? <clears throat> when they told us the virus escaped the lab versus okay. the time they told us. It they was got like, here. Yeah, it was like a six-week yeah. period, which okay. was a long time for a good spread. <clears throat> now, I remember that I didn't, fight, I didn't fight against any Iraqi weapons. I didn't fight against any Somalian weapons. I didn't fight against any Haitian weapons or Bosnian weapons. There were always Chinese and Russian weapons that we fought against. They're not our friends. So when I heard China did this, I'm like, okay, China probably did. I, w I easily bought into this. They did this on purpose. They're pissed. They're, you know, it's, we're still in a cold war with them. They're always going to try to get at us and dig us, cause us harm, you know, and, and it's whether it's freaking dropping some beetle that's going to eat up our trees or give us a little taste of a virus to create political chaos more than anything. Because to be fair, I believe that chaos is equal to the flu chaos, but it's a beautiful political weapon to get everybody fighting, get money flowing. So then I can hear language changing like two weeks into I'm like, oh, they're, they're, they're overreacting, overreaching. I hope my side goes in for the money too. Because now, what do you mean by that? My side goes in for the money. So, it, you know, if, if, if originally one side was making bigger hay out of it, trying to get as much money out of it and start handing out to the constituents. And you know, in fact, it comes back to them in, in some form through donations. So they're building their war chest with money. And I thought, well, now everybody's got to go get some of this money, you know, because they're releasing all this crazy money and to keep things flowing. So I'm like, okay, go get the money. I get what's happening. I can't control what's happening there, but I pray to God they get as much money as the other side does. So everybody gets money because now that's all they're doing is overreacting and overreaching during this mess. 
So let's define that just real quick because I'm an idiot. Yep. Sides. When you say sides, who's what? What, what are the sides? So uh, let's say a re- either a conservative or a liberal or a Democrat or Republican. So okay. initially it was seemed like one side was doing all this handing out of money. I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I want my side to win. I got to tell you, since then till now, I'm an extreme centrist, you know, because I, I, both sides want to eat me in my town. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Because, because I, I know, I know, in fact, you know, that th- this is not party related anymore. You know, it's nice. I, I, I want my guys to win, you know, for, for, uh, my team, my friends and stuff, make them feel better. I know none of that matters to me or affects me anymore because of some of the knowledge I got. So really, if, if you would, my guy wins, whatever side I'm on. And quite frankly, I'm registered as a Republican, but, uh, I just want them to win for my friends more than anything because I don't care because it doesn't affect me anymore. I'm, I'm I'm beyond that. I'll still go vote, put my finger down. I'm not as trustworthy in it, but I'm still going to do it. Um, and then I got lots of work to do after that. It's not just one vote and be done. I work every single day towards what we're about to talk about. When I say every day, I'm telling you every day. I've seen it. Yeah. So there's, there's not there's not a minute I don't think about it. And there's not a day I don't physically work on it. I have, I have other work to be done because I'm a contractor. And I try to squeeze this all in. And so it takes a full day to get this done. The Marine Corps has given me very bad sleeping habits so I can get a lot done. You know, so I got a, I got a good 24 hour stretch that I can, you know, mess around with. So are you guys ready? Are you ready? Listen, <laughs> when you brought this up the other day, <clears throat> I, my head went down a path uh, that I really enjoyed because, um, like these are the kind of things I love to talk about. You know, I'm a business owner, like you said, with COVID, you know, uh, that's when you and I, we went from being friends to being really good friends. Yeah. Um, you know, as you kind of went through your I'd transformation. I'd sleep naked with you for warmth. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, I didn't <laughs> know that's where do. this was going. Yeah. Are you going to edit that out? No, I'm going to keep that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is the kind of stuff I love to talk about. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about this because I am a, a history nerd. Um, I am an American history fanboy, if you want to call it that. But I love, I love talking about the Constitution, what it, the the reason it was written, but also, and and I I had this conversation with my wife the other day. Uh, I still firmly believe that the idea of America is the greatest country on earth. That's right. And I say that specifically, the idea, because what we were is not what we are. Um, and the direction that we've gone as far as getting away from constitutional law principles on how this country operates, um, I think we are so far off base, and I think that so many people in America right now, they want to argue about uh, issues, and so you have kind of like what you said, you know, I'm a, I'm a hard political centrist. I'm pretty extreme on some things on the right, pretty extreme on, on some things on the left, but I, I land in the middle. Um, when you take it all into account. And I think that the entire American populace, except for a few people, probably what we're going to talk, I hope this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, They're so focused on such stupid issues. Mm -hmm. Like I watched a back and forth tweet battle between, I think it's Eric Adams and uh, DeSantis, you know, and he's calling him names and accusing this. And it's like this back and forth. I saw it earlier today. That's the problem. It's a carnival. The, The problem is, is everybody thinks we're arguing over, uh, banning books or what you're allowed to teach kids in elementary school or this, or that the problem is we're so far gone from that. What we have as a country, it's just, it, it's, we're not even close to a constitutional Republic anymore. Right. I mean, we're just not, you know? <clears throat> so, so, so I, go. So I would say, say that, do you yeah. want me to play your clip first or do you want to talk? <clears throat> uh, I, I have a bad, um, I can't have a bad memory, but I have a full memory and I want, I want to hit something hit real quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just today I decided that I'm actually not a constitutionalist anymore. Mm. And that's just today because every day I get better. Yeah. So the only reason I say that is in fact, what makes us common of all states mm-hmm. is our bill of rights mm-hmm. and our declaration of rights. Mm-hmm. So the bill of rights or declaration of rights, because in Pennsylvania, it's the declaration of rights. The bill of rights is for all of us. That is literally where our common law is hid. Mm -hmm. And that's where all of us are common. When you create a constitution for Pennsylvania and you go to Florida, that doesn't go with you. Right. 
but your common rights do and your and the com the bill of rights goes with you because it's common to all men in all states correct so you're if, talking about the federal bill of rights yes no not necessarily it's not necessarily an example would be our oh, this is gonna be so much fun our declaration of rights in pennsylvania yeah of 1776 is better than our federal uh, bill of rights okay because we in fact and if people learn this before they try to write it out because remember this the declaration of rights of 1776 whether it be a state or whether it be federal and the constitutions that were first writ the first ones are inviolate that means to the end of the earth mm -hmm. can never not with a hundred percent majority vote can ever be overruled so the first papers exist and they can never be taken from us now, when they rewrite them or amend them, they like to make you think that they don't matter anymore because they changed up the wording a little bit. An example would be when they made the, 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 the 13th Amendment freed the slaves, but the 14th Amendment created a 14th Amendment citizen. So when the, if you read it and you read it closely and you actually start like highlighting um, things like person, people, citizen, U.S. citizen, you'll notice that there's, there's a difference there. So if someone isn't teacher, there's a difference. You would think that they all mean the same person, citizen, U.S. citizen, all means the same, but in mm -hmm. fact, it doesn't. So they created, they created a 14th Amendment citizen. So what you have to remember is just no matter what, if, if, if you guys don't remember anything else, Remember your first constitution, whether it be federal or state, and your first uh, bill of rights or declaration of rights is the most important thing to you. Get a copy of it printed off now before they try to start messing with it and make you think you don't have these things because they can do that in a blink of an eye. We've seen it already where they're altering definitions in Wikipedia and stuff. Mm -hmm. So get yourself a copy of it right away. Have it forever and ever. Make copies for your kids and grandkids and stuff. Put it in paper form, not just digital so it doesn't go away. That's inviolate. And you can literally, you, we built a country on that and we can rebuild a country on that. On that, the amended new constitutions and these the new ways that they did have to expand. Mm -hmm. And fair enough, they had to expand, right? Because you got bigger, there's different things, there's media changes and stuff. Okay, so let's start torquing it. Um, so it's always that which creates it, controls it, okay? So whether you're a God-fearing person or not, let's just start there for a second. God created man and man created the constitution. So if we want to leave God out, that's fine. Let's just start at man then. Mm -hmm. So man created the constitution. The constitution created governments, right? Governing bodies mm -hmm. to help um, regulate what they want done because it's, you know, we all can't come in all the fields together to push something through. You know, so you're going to have to put some delegates in there. So we create a gov governing body. So that being said, that which creates it controls it. So we, we made the constitution. So we control the constitution. Okay. And then the constitution created, you know, if you would government. So the government, then <coughs> we gave them the ability to make statutes, rules, and laws that belongs to them. So they can control, they can control their governments, right? Their government entities. Excuse me, I got a cough real hard. You keep coughing. <coughs> get that out. Yep, let me get a drink here. <laughs> Michael will be drinking bourbon in about a half hour, that's right. so that's okay. Yeah, if you give me a shot of that a little bit, that might soothe this. So. I'll burn them up. Don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> so the um, so the governments can we allow them to create their laws, their statutes, and their policies, and that's designed. They're bound to those. That's theirs. Believe it or not, it's not ours. I know it sounds crazy, but their laws, policies, and rules don't bind us. What they do is they 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 create titles, right? So I'm I'm not going to let you drink alone, okay? Because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> so this can get much, and people would think that somehow um, that that's not possible. I have every intention of going down the one way street the right way. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm going to stop at stop signs. All oh, this is right. That's to make sure I do no harm to nobody this is good business. But the reason why we got to be very careful is only for when we start going into our politics and our politicians, when they're being unruly and every now and then you have to revisit them and make them go back and say, Hey, this is what's, this is what's going on. We have to let them know these are your rules and laws that bind you. They don't bind me. So that three minutes tell me I only have three minutes to talk at a school board. Yeah, no, it does not, not me. Now, if I was a faculty member, I just took a title. If I was a taxpayer, I took a title. If I'm a parent and registered my, my student there, those are two titles. So we took titles. <clears throat> so if the government 
created some laws and statutes and gave us titles, then in fact, it looks like we're beneath them. The minute you can stand on, on what's yours, and you can just do it with your words. You can make your expression. You can make a declaration. I stand here as George Andrew Juhas, my full name. I stand here as George Andrew Juhas, as Sue Juris, saying, I'm a living man. I'm not just an entity here being representing me as a parent or a taxpayer. I'm here as a living man, Sue Juris, and I'm competent. I'm making my expression of who I am. I'm going to be speaking from the Constitution, and very specifically, the Declaration of Rights is where my common law is. So even if that's, if everybody can just freeze that out and write that down, because the declaration you just made is, I'm a living man, I'm not that entity you're just trying to make me be. I can take a break from being public and go private, and I just did with my expression and my declaration with my own words. So my status, my standing, and my jurisdiction is now common law and constitutional. When you go in and you go, your stupid policies are killing us and we're going to do this and your dumb books are going to do this. You're talking about their books. You're talking about their policies. It sounds like your jury diction, mm -hmm. your law saying is in their arena. Why would you want to fight that? So if you ever hear me talking about their rules and laws, I do try to make sure they know, hey, these are your rules and laws that are bound, that you're bound by. And by not following them, you in fact are having maladministration which is in fact an off is an oath of your office violation. You're breaking your oath of office, which now is my jurisdiction because it's my constitution that I created. And when I say me, am I being selfish? Am I being a little weird? Yeah, you have to be weird. You have to believe that it's in fact your constitution, your declaration. Mm. The power is with the people, not the governing bodies you put in place. Those are called governing bodies. We call them our government. That's fine. Ninety percent of people always call them their government, and that's their authority. I had pastors tell me, try to, try to straighten me out so I quit making so much noise. And they try to tell me about Romans 13, about you know, taking care of you know, respecting the authority because it's you know, sent there by God. Well, I have a hard time with that because I read that too from the Bible. What they're not doing is they're not reading our, these, these, these holy men aren't reading our Declaration of Rights. That's in fact says that the people are the authority and the power, not the governing bodies they put in place. So if you're going to try and look for authority that's been divinely putting, it's us. We the people, by the people, for the people. We, in fact, are the government. We created governing bodies to do our will. How do you do our will when there's 900 and some students in Tunkhannock, and I'm only there representing one or two of them, right? They're not listening to anybody else in the background, but they're going to listen to me, and I'm not picking the books they're listening to. I'm not going to go down that. I'm not going to argue about that. I don't care about transgender this. I don't care about that. But with every book you bring in here, you're going to follow your own rules, laws, and policies, and they're going to be constitutional. Because in fact, if we make every rule, law, and policy constitutional first, half of that arguing that you hear people doing, wasting their time, goes away. Half of it. Because now, when I can show people how you can in fact file claims against these schools for violating your constitution, and you have more success filing a claim versus taking them to a lawsuit, 90% of people are going to want to do lawsuits. And I'm not going to take it from them because I realize now I want people doing everything. I want the truck driver up there throwing chairs on stage because that's, that's good for uh, social media. It gets the hype up, right? I want the grandmother up there wagging fingers about scripture, about why you shouldn't be this, that, or the other thing. It all, it all helps with electability and unelectability. I want people talking about statutory law and doing lawsuits and scaring them and in fact, filing them. I want people also learning how to be one of the people. And literally, as one of the people, we have what they call a court of record. We don't, people, most people don't know this too. So, so, so far I asked you to um, get the 1776 Declaration of Rights and Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania and federal. Get it printed off, have it in a folder, large print, double space so you can make notes. The next thing you want to do is in fact, um, I lost my train of thought. Where, what was I just before that? We were talking about something. I don't know. This is join in together. Yeah. Like oh, all, all these the different people, people, all these different people. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. So what happens is I do now want people arguing statutory. I do want people, sw you know, wagging fingers and just mm -hmm. my father would have been the guy who comes off the, the truck driving uh, for two weeks. And if I had a rash on my face from a mask, he'd go in there. He'd be tearing people apart, throwing stuff at them. 
it, you know, it's not the way I want to do things now because I realize doing this business is actually more effective because that gets your, you know, a quick trip to jail, if you would, you know? And I still may wind up there too for some, you know, unlawful reason. So I want people doing everything, every part of it. I used to think I want to be the only one in my school board meeting because I didn't want no one to get it shut down. I want all my legal ease to come out of my mouth, to be captured on microphone, to be part of the government record. That was my goal. Get this stuff captured on YouTube. It becomes government record. They can't delete it. And then I realized, no, it's not getting done. I want everybody. I want everything. So I'm like, I, I didn't, I never controlled anybody, but I just wouldn't invite people. So I invited 250 of my friends one time to a school board meeting. By the end of it, they wanted to eat me. Your but, friends. Yeah. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But let's go back to, to the fact that some people have to learn how to be one of the people, right? It's a very specific thing. Being one of the people literally cuts you out from being a citizen and, and, and a parent and a taxpayer. You have to be able to say, I'm one of the people of Wyoming County. I'm one of the people of Luzerne County. You know, because if I'm from Pennsylvania, I'm one of the people. Don't tell me I can't come to your Luzerne County meeting because guess what? I'm coming because I'm one of the people and I know better. The minute you tell me I can't go in there, I'm going to file a claim against you. Because you just broke your oath of office. It wasn't like you were just a bully and didn't let me in. No, you took one of my rights away from me and I'm going to come get it. Because remember, freedom's a verb, right? Yeah. And if you don't stand on your rights, you don't have any. So sometimes, yeah, you got to let these knuckleheads cause their trouble. And I could force myself past them. I can, you know, do some kind of ninja backflip and get through there. But what good is it? What good is it? It's a short stay. Mm. So I'm going to, I'm going to win other ways and I'm going to get these doors open other ways. So someone has to stand as the people understand there's common law written inside of our declaration of rights. Every problem we have today could be found in that old 1776 document. It's, it's, it's crazy how it's, you can find it. So if you have trouble with your, with some kind of parking problem or something around here, and it sounds like it's a modern day statutory problem, you can find it in the 1776 Declaration of Rights. You have to know how to look for it. You want to read it. You want to exercise it. So then in fact, you go, oh, this sounds like a Ninth Amendment problem. And you'll find it. And if you have to argue it a little bit, guess what? You get to argue it in front of a trial by jury. Not a jury trial, but a trial by jury. So this was the other thing I wanted you guys to know. Declaration of Rights, Bill of Rights, 1776. The constitutions of 1776. Next one is there's a, there's a Article Two Court, an Article Three Court, and an Article Four Court. We're guaranteed in the Pennsylvania Constitution to have an Article Three Court. Mm -hmm. So, what are the differences between the three of them? So these are administrative courts uh -huh. where, like, they're like the CEOs of companies enforcing rules. That's what the judges are doing because, in fact, we're all in commerce. I used to think. When I saw that, I got a million some views on Yeah, I want to get into that. Yeah. yeah. So and when I saw that, I'm like, okay, if that many people like that, and I thought it was pretty boring, if that many people like that, because maybe I show how you can, in fact, you know, stand on your freedoms, somebody saying he can't have success like that again. I'm here now because I need to get, it's like, if you have this really top secret thing that can get you killed. Yeah. Not to say that I think that's what's going to happen to me. But in fact, somebody's going to try and shorten my ability, if you would, to do that. So if I, uh, I don't want to give myself away, but somehow they'll administratively try to pull me into their courts on some trumped up something. Just well, yeah, you see, you see it all the time. Yeah. You see, you see people who try to just just push back against it, uh, the system a little bit, yeah. and then they're like, "Oh, you didn't pay your sewer bill last month. Yeah. You're going to jail for ten years." Yeah. So that's in fact what is going to start happening, right? They're going to, to try. To, they're going to. So my school board alone tries to discredit me, right? So. Um, let me go back to the article. Yeah, yeah. article Sorry, mm -hmm. two, three, four. Two, three, and four. So two and four are administrative, like railroad court courts where you get sucked into where bar attorneys can hang out, right? So that's the British Accredited Registry, okay? In an article three court, they're not welcome. You get an article three court, court of record, common law court. This is where you get to face your accuser, right? You ever read that? Hey, I get to face my accuser. Mm -hmm. In an article one and article two court, let's pretend I'm in an article two court. And Tunkhannock Area High School was suing me, you know, for interrupting their, uh, you know, their meetings and it cost them this money. So they're an entity. Tunkhannock Area School District is an entity. And they have me as an entity in an Article 2 and Article 4 court. We're all entities, whether you like it or not, you're an entity unless you, you're somebody else and you know who you are. 
but you're an entity. Look at your driver's license, social security card, and your, you know, you're in all caps. Anything written all caps, in fact, shows that you are a fiction. You're an entity. You're here in the living blood too. So you can, you can span the gap. You don't have to just subside to this idea that I'm some corporation, but in fact, you are a corporation that was created, you know, and that was created once your mother signed you, signed that birth certificate, made you a U.S. citizen. So when you become something like that, these bar attorneys have to represent you, you know, in court, right? They have to be your power of attorney because, you know, and that's why you get summons to court, right? Because you're a dead, you're a dead entity or a fiction. You have to be summons to court and an attorney represents you. You could do this pro, pro se thing, but to me, it's, I, I don't want to be in their arena because you just got so many handles they can turn on you. So to as a citizen, you're at a terrible disadvantage. Yes. You yeah. want to go into an article three court because if, if Tunkhannock area school district, in fact, sues me and I, and I, and it's my right and I demand to be in an article three court and there's a way of doing it, making sure that you're in that. Some, it's just the way you use your words. It's jury diction, right? Jury, so the way your, your words are keeps you in there. You know, I don't understand really means something in that world. So when the cop says, you understand, well, you just understood, you understood him. You put him on top. It really means something. It's it's not like just a, I'm making that up. Yeah, like the etymology of it is like you, <coughs> yeah, you've agreed so, that you're below. So yeah, so essentially it's it's you stand under. You know, it's, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So now if you go to an Article Three court, same court, or same problem, Tunkanics after me. I say, a hey, uh, judge, I'd like to face my accuser. The judge is going to go, oh, Mister or Mrs. Tunkanic Area High School, please rise. Case dismissed. It's that simple. Case dismissed because there's no such thing. An entity can't be a man or a woman. In Article Three court, you get to face your accuser, period. So I know my school board is taking this very lightly, what I'm doing to them. To them, I'm a jarhead well, drawn. Up until now. Well, <laughs> so, so, okay. So um, I told Marky the other day, because like, we talked about this. I was like, maybe I'll play like the negative and f argue back here's the problem i haven't heard anything yet that i can argue back on so this is no See, fun for me. right right uh but when you so could and i'm just asking a clarifying question could the school board send a representative or in a article three court does it have to be a person a representative is an entity oh so it's literally this is kind of like this is the law that came with the mayflower it still exists I, and remember how you gave uh, an outlook which is fair so a person can sue a person. A person can sue a person. Uh, but a, I, 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 I'm yep, sorry. Yep. A man can sue a man or a woman can sue a woman. A person is a purser. Okay. A purser is a person who pays for a vessel prior to coming in the port. Yep. So a person is, is someone who pays. So like you're a vessel mm -hmm. because you are all caps if you look on your driver's license. Mm -hmm. And you, the living being, they actually give you the title person because you're paying for that vessel everywhere it goes. Because that driver, that's a vessel. You're paying for registration. You're paying taxes to uh, DC. It gets a little weird. And that's what I'm worried about. Like, and I'm glad you cut this up because the stuff that I learned, the reason I learned it is I, I have a meek lifestyle. Sometimes so I'm- So wait, keep, keep, oh, keep, put a pin in that. Keep your thought. So what I started to realize is like w these words- that we just take for granted and we yeah. use every day. And they have hear, meaning. They ha yeah, especially you, in the legal world. They have if you if you know what they mean and where right. they came from. If that very few I think people, very, very people know this. Very few people know it. The ones that know it are trying to do harm or trying to do good now because I know some things. Like I, I can't unhear what I hear and I can't unsee what I see. And I have a bad habit of standing in front of danger and solving a problem because I just can't walk away from it. Right. I can assure you if someone comes through that door. Not for no other reason. It's instinctive. And that person means any of us harm, whether I'm armed or not, I got to do something. I just can't sit here and be an innocent bystander. Right. From now. Yeah. And, and, and it's just my nature. I'm sure I was, um, when the military trained you, they trained you in a heightened, you're, you're at you're the peak of breaking. Right. So you're like, you're super sensitive. You're like just going nuts. And then all of a sudden they're just like putting this stuff in your vacuum, you know? So it's there. I yeah. get it. I, I'm trained. I get it. But I'm also, I didn't age out of it. Now I'm like more mad, right? So, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix what I can fix the time. I always said the pandemic's going to last this long. And what is that denomination? Is that one year, 10 years, five years? If I do nothing, it can grow. 
If I do something, I can maybe hold the line or make it shrink. But doing nothing is no option because these knuckleheads will keep dragging us into. Mm -hmm. there's, there's some people still playing the pandemic today, mm -hmm. zooming and making money and, and get, it's, it's nuts. I, if I'm not mistaken, you still can't walk into Scranton City Hall. It's I, I will walk. I, I think it's still locked. I yeah. will walk into Scranton City Hall. You you put a you put a closed road sign up, it's government uh, closed for the government. I'm going down that road by dark. I want to know why. There's no way that anybody should just follow these stupid just signs. Someone's got to do something. You can't just be that guy. You got to you got to go see. You're supposed to have a healthy suspicion of your government for a reason. No one's telling these guys how to do their business. We were supposed to consult and instruct them. That's our first amendment and declaration. Go consult and instruct your, your public servants. You're not doing it. You're saying, go get, oh yeah, I put Johnny in there. He's a good guy. Johnny might be a good guy, but the solicitor's not. And he's afraid of solicitor because solicitor's training him and consulting and instructing him instead of us. That solicitor's a bar attorney. So I forget where I was supposed to put a pin in it, but um, we'll yeah, me going. too. Jesus. Um, well, so that's okay because I want to go back and kind of clarify because um, I'm not, I'm in no way a constitutional scholar. I really like it, but I think there's going to be some people that are listening that might need a little bit of clarification yep. on, um, when, when you say the bill of rights. Mm -hmm. So just so people are understand what we're talking about that never end. You're talking about, uh, the first 10, correct? The first 10, 10, uh, are the first 10 amendments are the bill of rights. Yes. And, and it expands uh, as, as it gets older, cause it's been rewritten, but okay. you just want the first 10. Yeah. It, and it says it's a declaration of rights of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then it gets into the constitution. It is the framework for the constitution. It was built from that. And then, but the problem is once we built our governing bodies mm -hmm. and we give them freedom to go ahead and make some rules, laws, and policies to govern their agencies a little bit and govern their, their, their body that we created for mm -hmm. them, you know, but then the problem is we're not going in and making sure I can, I promise you, we have over 900 policies in Tunkhannock. So once I get some breathing room, you know, I'm, I'm going to go through every one of those policies. And if it's unconstitutional, I'm going to file a claim against it. So we're going, we're going to undo everything that's unconstitutional in Tunkhannock, whether they like it or not, they have no choice because I have a special court that no one knew was there. It's not just for me. It's for anybody. And if just like that video, which maybe is a good time to segue into yeah. it, mm -hmm. I'm going to teach people how to use the Article Three Court in their favor. And everybody, if again, if I walk out to the abyss today, to learn about Article Three Courts, and don't just uh, Google it and algorithm it. You got to go find a man or woman who's actually exercising it, because sometimes those algorithms today can steer you wherever they want you. Yeah. You know? Most of my connections today, I have to travel because I want to touch the man or woman. Little, I still let the fire breathing people get to me mm -hmm. uh, off the internet, the influencer, I guess you would call them. And I, I let it work, but then I always shake off the analysis paralysis over a bourbon or, or a coffee because I want to know that I, I want to know I'm on to something. Yeah. Because he might have something and his collaborates with that, but the other stuff about aliens and UFOs, I don't want that. But those two things. Oh, that George, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we guys? <laughs> well, uh, one more thing before we get into it. And I, and I yeah. think it's really, really important for people to hear this stuff before they watch this, because for, I think for a lot of people listening to this, uh, a lot, most people go through life. Just ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Life I, is good. I, yeah. I understand that life is it, it's, it's, it's easier to be told what to do and be provided for than it is to go out there and, and you know, fight. Uh, freedom is difficult. Freedom is expensive. Freedom mm -hmm. costs. Um, but I think for people that are hearing this as they're trying to wrap their head around this, um, a, a really big thing that I think we need to hammer home to is, and you kind of touched on it, the Constitution, the, uh, um, the Bill of Rights were not written to tell us what we can and can't do. They were written to tell the government what they can and can't do. That's right. And I think that's really important for people to hear. I mean, the Constitution, it's it's kind of a, a framing of how the government will operate. And then you look at the Bill of Rights. So, I mean, you know, even at the federal level, you know, the, the First Amendment, you know, freedom of religion, freedom of press, freedom of assembly. Um, that is – that rule is in place not to tell us how and when we can do that. That rule, that, that amendment – is there so that the to tell the government you are not allowed to violate this mm -hmm. in this citizen's the, life or the, you know this is really really hard stuff yeah you know i went I, I go places to learn this now i waited 30 minutes in line to get in this 36 hour lecture 
And after that 30 just all at once? To, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was it was over a couple of days, right? Yeah, it was <laughs> okay. it, it was a couple of days, but just waiting in line 30 minutes, I was prepared to go home. I had everything I needed. I went there because I didn't want my school board to be able to arrest me or to um, give me a lawsuit because I won't be able to survive that. I have a very meek lifestyle for whatever reason. I, I charge it to me, but everybody says everything is God's way. Okay, so why did it keep me meek? Maybe this is why. Because I got some pretty influential people who will dump money on me, but they won't want to be heard because they're afraid they're going to get docs. Is that what they call it? Uh, or, docs is the internet version of like giving away people's like addresses. Okay, so they're like they're worried about being like the cancel stuff. Or they're they're like, worried about being canceled. People yeah. not doing business with them, and because there are no more assassinations, it's just yeah. we're going to do it yeah. in your personal life. So the, they, there's I have some really good friends who just don't want to put it out there. N who's coming for my for my cow manure or pig manure or whatever yeah. I got at my little piece of property? You know that I've been able to live a meek lifestyle, put my kids first, my family first over me. I still have my same nineteen. 17 Eddie Stone I used for hunting. You know, I didn't go splurge on a new rifle. It gets it Oh, done. I did. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so um, what I wanted to go back to was what we're about to see is um, I'm standing on my right. Yeah, can you set it up a little bit? Like, where were you? Yep. So everybody's got to know again, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm, if some of the video doesn't show this, but I, I changed up my jurisdiction. I am not abiding by their rules and laws they're violating them in fact i'm following their own rules we are governed by consent right so it's it's not an automatic if they say this if they say i only have three minutes and i want to be good i'll take three minutes if i want to be bold because in fact i got something to say to you that you're i want this thing to move if something's wrong i need to talk more and i'm going to talk more and if you make me leave my jurisdiction if you listen to my october 26 uh school board meeting that was at tunkanic that was right? at tunkanic uh t-a-s-d uh school board meeting i in fact changed my jurisdiction right before your eyes if you didn't know it i was doing it you wouldn't know it i said look i'm not going to sit here and argue about your statutory rules anymore those bind you they don't bind me and i'll show that to you in a minute i said i'm going to be standing on my declaration of rights as sue jurors and right there just that alone says i'm speaking from the common law um, as a as a man, a competent living man with blood, and uh, standing standing jurisdiction was just nailed, and I changed it, and they didn't want nothing to do with that because I was getting ready to charge them with maladministration. Maladministration is a violation of the oath of office, which in fact is a self executing portion of the Fourteenth Amendment, which would make them no longer be able to hold office, so they couldn't hear me. But here they um excuse me, I clear my throat. Yeah, drink that burger. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, but so here's the thing. I, so I know, I know of school board members as elected officials. We've actually had somebody from Scranton school district here. Ty Holmes is a great guy. Um, I think when you will go up there and say that, I don't think they know what you're talking about. They don't. And, and I'm getting better. Like I literally, like I get better every single week, every day I get better Yeah, because I dive into this stuff. So you have to now. I, my wife would kill me because she knows I don't have this time to do this. You know, this isn't fixed. That's not fixed. We don't have money for that, whatever. Yeah. But yet I still find time to get better at this. If she sees this video, which I hope she doesn't, she'll be like, oh, no wonder why I'm not getting this done and that done. She doesn't know what I'm doing sometimes. I just, I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Right. And then I go do something and then I'm on the front page of a pa front page of a newspaper. She goes, you didn't tell me you were doing this, but she, she's coming <laughs> it's, around. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Yeah. She's starting to get it. Now she works for our Tunkhannock area school district and the monsters at Tunkhannock area school district. And I can't be held liable or defamation or defamation on that because, in fact, everything I'm saying is true. These monsters come off to the stage to, to threaten me with physical harm, right? Because they're bigger than me. I fear no man. I mm -hmm. promise I fear no man. I don't know the outcome, but I fear no man. I've been knocked they, out before. I can get knocked out They again. dare to come off the stage after me, try and challenge me, trying to create a scenario is what they're doing. And I'm under surveillance all the time. I, I, I went out to the, to the parking lot because we're all leaving, not to like follow trying them. trying to provocate you. Oh, my God. So this guy's like, are you threatening me? So no, I want to know why you shut the lights off because you didn't let us assemble afterwards. You did that so we couldn't assemble, you know? Are you threatening me? No, I'm not threatening you. And then he saw that I shuffled my 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 camera around. He goes, are you videotaping me? I said, yeah, Bill, I'm, 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 I'm videotaping you. And then he walked away because originally he was going to walk to the police officer, which I was going to, to lead him to the gallows because he would have hung himself by telling me I threatened him and I didn't, and he would have been making a false police report. But unfortunately, I made the bad move of shuffling my camera and he saw that and he immediately shut down. But I still have him up to that point and everybody can see it. So these people, 
asked me, do I like my insurance? Because my wife works for the school district, right? So if I lose that's, my insurance- That's intimidation. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's everything. It's, it, it, it's By a government official. Yeah, it's a horrific. It's, I tur- it turns into extortion now that I know more because I got better. I was tackled by a county commissioner out of Wyoming County. Didn't know what to do with it at a time, but guess what? I got smarter. I can go back. There's, there's no uh, statute of limitation belongs to statutes. When my right has been violated, if it takes me 10 years to find you for punching me in the face and doing harm to me because it's my property you just did harm to, after 10 years, I'm coming for you. There's no statute of limitation to that punch. If you talk about statutes, there's a statute of limitation. Who created it? People create statute. I created common law. Well, God, I'm sorry. God created common law, basically. God-given rights. Not Anybody gets harmed can go get, you know, go get eye for an eye, if you would. And that's, and that's person or property. Yep. It's, so it's like trespass on nothing, right? Your, 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 um, your, your character, I'm sorry, your, your reputation, your money, your children or your property. That's how we're going to win this thing with our children, by the way. We're going to win this thing with our children because they're our property until mm-hmm. they're, until they're of a, 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 not a minor age, you know? And, uh, so that, that's how we're eventually going to win this. But Going back to this real quick, this school board was about to vote on a three-year teacher contract, okay? So lots of taxpayer money for a 3% increase over th- every three years, not over three years, but every three years, okay? So it's just 3% on the total this year, 3% yep. on the total next year, 3% on the total. And I don't even like to dive into that too much. I just know that that wasn't being represented well because it wasn't on the webpage 24 hours in advance, which is their statutory rule, which they should have done to all the citizens. They, in fact, also didn't have it there for me to view. So right away, they broke their own statutes, rules, and policies. So I was going to stand on that alone, and I was going to tell them, in fact, that they can't vote on this because you know they, they don't have it ready for everybody. These citizens behind you don't have this. These taxpayers, these parents don't have, they're supposed to have what you see so they can have an open discussion. There's case law on there that says that's a First Amendment violation. Because if you two are going to vote on something that I didn't get to see, therefore I can't speak on it, it's a violation. That's what they decided inside their statutory courts. So there's case law. But what they're doing is they're throwing you the double middle finger saying, sue us. Because they know that people are going to run out of money. I already have two lawsuits going with Tunkanic. They're just trying to run you out of money. Yeah, and make sue you go us, away. Sue us, sue us. And then they drag it out in courts as long as they can, get every dime out of it. So that's me. I didn't know not to do that, if you would. So right. I did, though. I had to do something. At the time, I got to do something. Like, oh, crap, here it comes. I got to do something. I do something. I'd rather do something than nothing and make my correction on the way. Self-correct, right? So now I realize, okay, I could have sued them literally no less than 20 more times. And I, I got, how do I get the money? How do I get the money to keep these lawsuits? They know that. You know, I can only, I can only you know, get so many donors and donations and stuff. So I'm like, okay, how can I do this otherwise? So now I found the Article Three Court. If they turn the light switch on at the wrong time, I can have them in court inside of 30 days. Are you paying a lawyer to do this or are you doing it all yourself? Yep. But if you still have to pay to file. Yeah, you still yeah. got to pay all your private stuff. And I have a constitutional counsel that helps me. He's an advisor. But I have to represent myself. In, these, in this Article Three Court, that school board has come alone. I get to talk to the, if you would, the dumb school board member who's going to dare to give me no due process. And they're going to have to sit in front of a trial by jury and explain to these other, uh, these trial by jury people, how dare you take my... Oh, they don't get to bring a lawyer either. Mm-mm. If they want their <laughs> attorney to come in, he has to come in as an adjoiner. And he, in fact, has to, if you would, relinquish his bar, court, or his bar card and just be like an advisor. And I don't, I think what happens after they do that is they relinqu- relinquish it all together because they just broke their bar oath or whatever okay this is yeah. heavy isn't it isn't it heavy yeah and uh yeah. i just wrote something down that you don't get to see yet yeah. but i'm going to ask you about it later because mm-hmm. i think it's very i think that there's going to be some people listening to this that are like that's it i Marky like and micah have finally lost their minds i like um first-hand experiences yeah. I, I got a lot of second-hand knowledge i'm deliberately trying to experience everything firsthand so how this court thing ends you know about the bar attorneys coming in or not from my from my study is they can't come in as the representatives because they're not allowed in there. Now they can may sit next to them as an adjoiner and advise them 
And whether they get to take their bar card back or not, I have to do more research on that. But I know they don't get to come in there and represent. They can't represent the woman or the man. The woman or man has to answer answer questions. So um, we've been teasing this long enough. Yeah. Um, and I just, wanna, I just want to give people perspective. <clears throat> okay. So, so I, this happened less than a week ago. Yeah. Let me do it real quick. And I promise I won't get distracted. So I gave them hell and, 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 and there's going to be an attorney who kept trying to sit me down, their solicitor. And I said, because in fact, once I started speaking, right, if they're my servants, I'm their master. And I know it sounds old English and it sounds too much, but that's just the way it is. And that attorney stepped out of her role a little bit and she kept trying. I said, I will not sit down. I'm going to be heard. Their solicitor. Their solicitor. Yeah. So she was just very vile. And uh, I said, I'm not leaving the podium. I'm just absolutely not leaving this podium. You know, and they called the police. So all I did was open up and bookmark a bunch of stuff because I knew whatever cop came, I was going to say, you know, what I said. And you're going to see, I, in fact, schooled him a little bit. And what I basically said is- It was amazing to watch. <laughs> and and I, I don't know what the hoopty is, why I got over a million views, but I'll own it, right? So I got my hair cut today. So I can come here and I can own this. <laughs> I appreciate it. Right? And I'm going to own this. And, and so this video going one point, whatever million, it has shortened my lifespan. Not my heartbeat, but my lifespan. They're not going to want me to have success doing this. I can't be the only one doing this. Right. They will find some administrative reason. Now, remember, just because I want to stand on the third, um, on my uh, Article 3 courts and I want to stand on my being, those knuckleheads can still, in the blink of an eye, rouse me up, put me in jail for something trumped up. Right. I'll never get, I won't sign a single document. Where's the camera? <laughs> I will not sign a single document doesn't mean I did anything wrong, but they will keep me in jail as long as they can. And maybe longer than you would think I did something, but it's only because I can't sign a single thing. Not, I can't sign my name with prejudice. I can't sign nothing. And for that, they're going to keep me as long as they can. But ultimately, everybody who did this is going to pay a price. Even the janitor who cleans the toilet seat in my jail cell will pay for that eventually because they can't keep me there forever. As long as I got good friends on the outside to make sure they're doing their work on the outside. <laughs> we, we, we've been doing this podcast for what, like two years now? Year and a half. Yeah. We've never had somebody turn and give a statement, a future statement <laughs> yeah, for no. when they're going to be kept in jail my illegally. Lifespan, my lifespan has literally shortened of being able to do this. Your efficacy. Yeah. I yeah. Can't, they're they're going to they're gonna try. Yeah. I, I, I parked in a, a no parking zone. When my, when my stinking commissioner, and I'm not done with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. When my commissioner told his uh, sheriffs to remove me and they bullied me out and I wouldn't leave, stood my ground. I asked him to go get the policy that he read. And he, I saw him in the, in the cameras. There's 17 cameras. And I saw him at the top of the elevator reading the policy that he wrote, shaking his head, pissed off, knowing when he comes downstairs, he's got to hand me the policy that says, in fact, I can be in there. So it's, it was, it's been over a year, but you took my rights away from me. If during that little tussle, will you encourage those sheriffs, two armed men, which is greater than one, the conspiracy was the three of you. If somebody's gun fell out of their holster during what you created, what you provocated, if somebody's gun fell out of their holster and someone yelled the word gun, how does that end, Mr. Commissioner? How does that end? Oh, yeah. These people are provoking stuff. Right now, they're searching and seizing. Everybody goes in the Tunkhannock Area School District School Board. If you say, I don't want to get searched going into the school board, they let you go into a basketball game with hundreds of people. So how much of a threat were you? Where is the probable cause? Where is, where is the Terry search? Where is, give me the articulate, reasonable suspicion of why you're doing this? Because you have to have an articulate, re reasonable suspicion of why you're doing it. While you're searching people. While you're searching people. And it can't just be an anonymous tip. It has to, in fact, be something else. And if you're so concerned about that person, not a group of people, it says it has to be directed at a person, not a group of people. And you turn around and let that person go to a basketball game, how irresponsible are you? So then all they're doing is showing that they're doing this to, to uh, scare a, people to yeah. not go into the school board. Because guess what? The other night, how many people at the school board meeting? One person. Are you shitting me? They're, it's working. They're, they're doing their work. They, they, get, they get so much done. Boop. I remember one stupid school board meeting member saying, hey, could we hurry this up? I got a meatloaf in the oven. I'm thinking, you son of a bitch. Yeah, this, this affects our kids. Yep. This affects- But this. They, they don't know. They don't care. They're just, they, whatever. But back to my commissioner. So, you know, I, I know my rights. I learn more and more every day. I'm not finished with that. 
Um, okay, so this video on TikTok yeah. of all places, which you care nothing about. Yeah, my daughters are so jealous. <laughs> I didn't it tell has, them. I didn't tell them what it was for. They're like, how did you get that many? I said I was so, doing. I was doing the jiggy or the giddy or the gritty or something. And so it's over a million views. And just to give people perspective, a million views is well, ten times the the audience of CNN right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mike, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Play it, Dan. Cut to that camera. If you want us to stop or anything, you can let us know. I gotta get closer so I can hear what they're saying. So this is George explaining. Section two, section two of the Sunshine Law allows me to be here as a citizen. Here inside of the uh, section ten objection, section ten of the Sunshine Law allows me to, in fact, it says any person has the right. To object, I'm not a taxpayer of this county because I'm a, I'm a citizen of the state and I'm allowed to be here. And if I see an objection, I get to claim it. I get to read specificity of the law, which I have not been able to do because I keep getting interrupted. Right. I've also not been able to give specificity to the claim, which I'm not because I've been interrupted. Okay. And I, in fact, deserve a remedy or a denial. But they're not letting me read it. An example would be tonight. Uh, the biggest the biggest hub of tonight is this. They're supposed to make available for individuals in attendance. This is a, they collect $80 million off of these people. Mm -hmm. There's no representation of the $80 million. So this is taxation law representation. So the jurisdiction actually went to me, Sue Juris, speaking okay. about common law and about the constitution. So you guys aren't constitutional police. If you won't arrest them for me, then you can't arrest me for them. You can threaten me with arrest right, if you'd like you. to. And I will leave under that duress so not to get you guys in trouble. So all you need is to threaten me with arrest, and I will leave under that. However, I still have to get your cards. Right, right. Okay? But all these people have to do is one thing. They have to listen to the idea that they're about to vote on a millions of dollar budget for a uh, contract. They didn't have it on that screen. They don't have it in the attendance for these people to view. Okay. They put it on their le le website late trying to trick the people. But even if it was on the website 24 hours in advance, I deserve to have it right there when I walk in that building. And it says, anybody coming to attend, all attendees. So they're not following their, own, pause law, their own statute of policy. So before you consider arresting me, maybe. I'm not, I'm not even I know, anybody. But threaten to arrest them. I'm not threatening to arrest them. I know, but you can't threaten to okay. arrest them, I understand, because we're actually in a constitutional government right. meeting right now. Gotcha. And until I do harm, if I do harm to somebody up there, I, in fact, get arrested. I plan on doing no harm. I'm here in honor with clean hands, and I'm here to make sure the procedure and the laws are followed. These people should only adjourn so they can come back and do it properly. If they adjourn and come back, it's way ahead of schedule. There's no reason to force this because I refuse to leave. And you have, in fact, incited. Okay. Yo, yo, yo. I, I got I to let them know. Okay, so I'll just tell it to you. Okay. What my, these public officials just okay. did is called extortion. In part of extortion is when one public official incites another public official to come to harm, either physical or emotional. If you were to arrest me, that would be physical and mental harm. They incited you by telling you, I've done no harm here tonight. I'm speaking on my constitution as soon as you're Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. How long would it take for you to read into the record? I will read into the record all parts of this. The whole book. No, no, sir. <laughs> just the part about I love that part. The I want problem is they cannot vote on what th their law. Tell them how many minutes, their uh, law George. Says, says they cannot vote on something that we don't have record of. It's a law. We don't have record of. It. Just ask them. Please go get us. Print it all off. Give it to us. And if they did, it's only proof it wasn't available. Twenty-four hours. Well, even if they don't do that, yeah. then you've got it. They should adjourn the right. meeting. The only way out of this is adjourn the meeting and do it properly. They can come back. Three days from now, make a special meeting just to vote on this. They, they can, you can, you can reschedule us three days from now. Just give the. All right. Uh, I can like I, can the I make, score. Can I make a comment real quick? Yes, sir. Um, it seemed like Officer Woodruff was kind of with you, mm -hmm. which is not expected. Yeah, that's right. It, it was definitely the right, if you would. I'm, I'm not saying I'm the right person, but the right two people had a good conversation yeah okay because respectfully yeah i think i could have been a good truck driver dad like my dad was yeah and i probably had would have had some accuracy with a chair 
what she what he would do. He'd throw a chair up on stage. <clears throat> yeah. But I I can last longer this way than throwing mm-hmm. that chair. So and 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 the and you'll get more respect from people who might I, otherwise look at the situation. I want like, ah, you know, just trying I to... appreciate that. I don't care about respect. I, yeah. I promise you I don't. No, I, I, I want to last as long as I can last. When I say respect, I don't mean um when I say respect, I mean people will actually listen. Yep. Somebody like my wife, uh, this doesn't interest her at all. Yep. But she will listen to you because you are being respectful, you're being articulate. I'm trying not to let that sink into my body, even though I would want your wife to listen. Yeah. I'm trying not to worry about what other people think about me because yep. I had no idea that this was going to happen. I'm still going to try and do my business. I knew I was on to something because I was having success. And I know if I have success, it's going to be short-lived. So actually, mm-hmm. a week prior to this, I said, Mark, you got to find a way to make me go viral. He didn't do this. Somebody just randomly did it. It's not me. It's my message because my yes. message turns yes. out what I'm learning needs but to be But the heard. way you conduct yourself. And that's going to be helpful. And I yeah. promise that I, to my friends here at the table and over there, that I promise <laughs> that my intent mm-hmm. is always to follow the law, follow the legal stuff so that nobody can ever, you know, get me into something, you know? So it's basically saying I'm always going to be in honor with clean hands. And that's fair. I've always said word of honor, like to my wife, as if she thought I was lying to her because, you know, husbands lie to wives. But when she really wants to know, it's a word of honor. Yeah. And, and I would throw it around because it's something that we learned in the Marine Corps. Right. But it's for real. If you literally can do your business, you know, with honor and clean hands, it's called removing controversy. Mm-hmm. And I only learned that like six weeks ago, maybe what that really meant about removing controversy. I try not to use any adverbs or adjectives in my affirmations or my affidavits. I don't embellish just the fact this school board member ran over my right foot with this bus. Here's the evidence, the witnesses and the, um, the cameras. That's it. Inside of uh, article two or article four court, be like, well, you know, how much were you drinking the night before? Did you maybe cause your foot to get run over? Did you, you know, what were you eating that morning? Did you actually do this intentionally to try to make them, um, you know, get sued? Did you do this? They tried to like, you could just you, muddies the water. You can indict a ham sandwich in today's statutory rules and laws, which are held in twos and fours. But in article three. In article three, did you do harm to me? Yes or no? Did you knock my tooth off? You know. The other we, mitigating circumstances <laughs> don't. It's, and you're going to get a trial by jury, you know, not a jury trial, but a trial by jury. So you're going to get your peers and they're going to get to hear the argument. If you have something to, to be said, you're going to get to be heard. So uh, Mayflower, right? So we all get off the Mayflower. We create our little commune there. We're all corporation, right? So we come off, the, you know, everything is like legit chartered and everything. Two drunk guys get in a fight. One knocks the other guy's tooth out. Every Saturday they had court of, uh, they had a court of record. You know, and anything that went on with the small crew, you had to deal with it. You know, well, Johnny knocked my tooth out. Well, the, the jury said, well, he's guilty. What are you going to do? You got to pay him a day's wages. He lost, you know, he was in, in the bed all day and you got to carve him some new teeth. You know, that, there's your remedy. You're always looking for remedy. Um, you know, his cows came across, ate your meal. You can have court through the mail. Uh, the constitution says you need a prosecutor, you need a jury, and you need a, a defendant. So when I do affidavits, right, I do an affidavit, I see your cow eating $300 worth of my products in the, in the garden back in the day. So I, I have witnesses to it. I got a sum. I go to the notary. I send a, a note to you, an affidavit saying, hey, in fact, your cow with this brand, and these are my witnesses, and they see that he ate this, I want remedy. You know, and if you don't respond to this within 72 hours, you were in fact acquiescing to it was your cow. You did this and my claim and my allegations are true. If you don't respond, just like a speeding ticket, they're guilty. Mm -hmm. Never to be overturned, not by the Supreme Court, by any court in the world can ever overturn an unrebutted affidavit of fact that's under oath, has to be under oath. So when you go to the notary, you're not just asking for a notary saying, I need to be under oath for this. So I'm being the prosecutor saying, you did this, your cow did this, this is yours. Now to respond to me, you got to do it under oath. So there's the pains and penalties of perjury, which is a fine and jail time. Make sure, and what it does is everything I do is under oath. That means you're always in honor with clean hands. I promise you this person did this. I have evidence, or I'm just not going to risk 10 years in jail or whatever they give you for right. perjury. I'm for, just not going to risk it. For falsifying something. Yeah, if or, I'm not sure. Yeah. Next, because my school board just is like a gift that keeps on giving. They violate so much stuff. It's unbelievable. (laughs) 
and I'm only getting smarter. They're in so much trouble. I'm going to be smarter tomorrow. So why, why, what, what made you, um, were you always going up to the school board? Like what was, what was like the, the, no, the gradual. It, w- it was occasionally at the school board, but when I saw the overreach and the overreaction by local government, I said, whether it's my stinking dog catcher that gets elected or whether it's my county commissioners, I got to untrain because everybody got trained how to overreact, how to overreach. During COVID? During COVID. Yeah. COVID did this, right? So I wanted to make sure if there's five spaces at the courthouse, all five spaces are filled up and all the employees are working. None of this garbage. Some working at home, getting full pensions and mm-hmm. the dog catcher only works on Mondays and Fridays, half day. Like, mm-hmm. no, 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 and no, nobody's doing this. Enough is enough. Yep. So I, I'm, I, my goal was to stop that, right? So the school board, it was part of the problem because of the masking stuff. And this is where I said, I invited like 200 and some people to come to one meeting. We try to be impactful about the mask, you know? And it turned out that you're supposed to have two minutes per topic. Well, my school board president at the time made up some random rule that I didn't know how to handle at the time, but she made some random rule that you only have two minutes one time. Well, I had like this much file folders full of different topics. No one, she was possibly going to do this. I had it prioritized, which what I want to talk about first, not knowing how long before someone drug me so, out. Of so in their thing, it says you have two minutes per topic. Yeah, it was in there. And now, so for the night, she made it no. But I would never have stood for that today. Back then, I didn't know any better, right? So it was over a year ago. So I'm, I'm telling you, it changes that fast. When you make constant contact with your opposition in, this, in, in the art of war, they call your enemy. I'll call it your opposition. They're not my enemy. They're my friends who are just misguided by this thinking counselor. This uh, solicitor. solicitor, yeah. So if you make constant contact with your opposition, you're going to get smarter. Just go, go do something. You're going to get smarter. So I brought 250 people, and what I did was, since they only give me two minutes, um, I would take someone from the audience, put them on the microphone, and I would talk over their shoulder. I said, "Tell them that if they do this for too long, that this is going to cause a carbon monoxide." You know, and so every time I wanted to talk, I would just bring a new person up for two minutes. And I would tell them, so but get, I was speaking loud enough. So I was on the mic, you know? So, so you got meat puppets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and some, a lot of people were letting me do it, you know? So it didn't know, I had to do something at the time to compensate for what they did. Turns out what they did was illegal, unlawful. didn't know what I was doing. I can go back on that too. And I, I'm going to go back on it all, but I got to get my project done now so I can concentrate on this. Some, I have to make a source of income somehow, you know? Right. But all, everything that's ever happened needs my attention, needs attention from someone who's going to use an Article Three court and make claims when you make a complaint you're using statutory law you're going to have a judge you're going to go complain to him there's going to be two arguments and then you know they usually railroad each other everybody's trying to get as much money as you can out of this right there's a lot of money exchanging hands <clears throat> when they get into court you're bonded right that's coming out of your assessed acute trust that's coming out and people are like what is that i have two heads right now for saying that but so the the legal system two and fours aren't very good. You got to stay away from it if you can. Most people are going to wind up. There's people in our society who needs titles, who need to be policed. Addicts need to be policed. Criminals need to be policed. Elderly people need to be policed. Handicapped people need to be policed. They need they need help, right? If someone's stealing their spots, let the police. Yeah, you're not them. saying just to watch them negatively. They're they're they need people need to be taken they care need, of. They need our government to help them, right? Yeah. So the addicts need need our penitentiaries and our um, rehab rehabs yeah. to get them straight. Just before coming here, there was an incident downtown. Oh yeah, yeah. a guy that who man, was just out needed, of his mind yeah. who climbed up a crane yeah. and was threatening to jump. And I asked, I asked, uh, I won't say who, but one of the SPD guys that I know. Uh, like I said, is this a, you know, what's the penalty for this? Is this criminal? What is this? He said, honestly, no, like this guy needs help. Yeah. He doesn't need punishment. He needs help. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's the kind of thing you're talking about is, you know. So what I'm doing inside of a school board and what everybody should be doing inside there, cause they like to call themselves volunteers and it, like it eases the burden. No, you are a public official. And we screwed up. The people screwed up because we're not consulting and instructing. If all of us went into a school board meeting because we're all brand new school board members, we would suck like they suck. Right. Unless you did some work. A school board member should look like me and act like me. But no one's willing to put this time into it. I've been given this time now because these knuckleheads did what they did and they triggered my bad sleeping habits, which now makes me want to know more. Right. And I'm going to finish this because I'm, I'm, this one lady's making me a shirt that has a fast forward button. <laughs> we would walk down the middle. I know this sounds insane, but we would walk down the middle of the streets in Somalia. Why? You want to find out what the bad guys are? Walk down the middle of the street. They'll, they'll, they'll come shoot out. at you. Yeah. yeah. And they're terrible. So 
you just get, sometimes you get lucky or whatever, but you got to get this going. You can't just wait forever. You know, you get worn out, you know, so you got to get stuff. You want things to happen. Fast forward stuff. So tell me about like some of the stuff that, that, um, cause you went there as a, a, a concerned citizen, uh, a parent, yep. uh, a business owner, a taxpayer. Yep. What are, and you, I mean, were you, the I don't ma- know the history of the like, mask would have been the first thing, right? I didn't like the idea of everybody ever wearing a mask. If you want to wear a mask cause you felt like it was to protect you. I want you to wear a mask and nobody can tell you you can't wear a mask. That's where this right of conscience of Pennsylvania mm-hmm. declaration of rights is better than the federal government. The federal government says freedom of religion. What if you're not religious? The Quakers were great people. The Quakers were very religious that they would say trembling and they'd be like, ah, the Lord Jesus. And they, they would quake in their boots. So they call them the Quakers, but they were smart enough to say, Hey, look at some people might not come to Jesus until they're on their deathbed. They may never let's make sure we leave a society. Let's create the, the they would be turning in their graves. They created the city of brotherly love. Philly. The Quakers did that. Mm-hmm. And everybody wanted to come there because if you were black, if you were Irish, if you're Chinese, you were welcome there. The city of brother left. That's they did this. You know, our politicians and governing offices, they've destroyed that. Pennsylvania is the most decentralized uh, state back then. William Penn and the Quakers did that on purpose to make sure nobody can gain control of us. We were a decentralized government. One governor can't say you all have to worship this. Like, no, we could do what we want inside of our boroughs, townships. Only two other states got bigger than that as they formed was Illinois and Texas, mostly because of uh, geographical reasons, you know, but the Quakers had it right. Do you want to be decentralized, right? Like what? Do, so when you're decentralized as a government, what do they do? They create bureaucracy. They create little entities like the school board association, right? So the school board association writes school board policy for all of Pennsylvania. So what happened to our decentralized government? My school board members are put there saying, hey, school board association, we don't want your policy. Get that out of here. We don't like that porch. We want to eat a different flavor here in Wyoming yeah. County. But our school board members are like, okay, let's go. It's easy. They did it for us, pay them $7,000. And guess what? The policy they give us is a policy that opens a door up to what? Some bad curriculum, some bad stuff, because they actually create this. The policy says it's okay to let boys in the girls' bathrooms. And some people hate that. I'm not going to say whether I hate it or not. <laughs> if that happens to my daughter, I tell my daughter, I want you to, I would, my kids have this um, permission that if something bad's ever happening from another student or an adult that you start striking them until they stop moving or an, another adult comes because you, you can't ever, I, if they're being bullied or something bad has happened to mm-hmm. them, like, I, you got to teach them youngness to defend themselves. You know, it sounds violent, but if something's happened to them, you can't just be a victim. You turn that on them, turn the offense around. Mm-hmm. So my school board was doing this mask thing and I didn't care if they wore a mask or didn't wear a mask, but you're not going to tell us that we all have to wear a mask. Right. So the group that came in, most of the people that came in truly had to get back to work and they can't get to work if their kid's not wearing a mask and the school let them in, then they got to be home and they got to figure this out and it's hard for them. So when they heard there was a compromise, like that they were going to let you back in without a mask, if you signed up to be a 504 which made it seem like you had some kind of a mental problem or you had some type of disability. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They, so a 504 form says I have a, I have, uh, I have some type of disability that makes me have to not wear a mask. Freedom is not a disability. So I'm saying you don't have to wear a mask because you don't have to wear a mask. But what they said was, okay, we'll compromise with you all. We'll let your kids come in without a mask if they sign a 504. Well, fast forward two years later, guess what? They get tons of money for making kids have problems. Mm-hmm. You know, so, signing those 504s. Yeah, 504s, IEPs, cha-ching, cha-ching. It's, this is the biggest cash for kids program. It, it's right before our eyes. My solicitor in Tunkhannock. Who is your solicitor? Uh, his name is John Audi, and he works Does that name sound familiar, Sweet Micah? Stevens. Wait. John Audi. Is the solicitor for yeah, the Tunkhannock. Tunkhannock. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Okay. Yeah. This all makes sense now. Where, so, and where where was he a solicitor? Scranton. And where is where is he not a solicitor anymore? Scranton. Okay, just making sure that I didn't I didn't pr- I didn't I didn't warn you about that, right? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he sits on all he sits on board. He takes money from and sits on boards or sat on boards of every entity you can think of that penetrates Tunkhannock Area School District and takes tax dollars away and puts garbage in that makes us conflict. So what do you mean? Like vendors? Like, like Okay, so he... he, he and this is, all, this is all, we can verify all yep, of this. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, okay. and, and if I'm off by one, forgive me and tell me I'm wrong and everything <laughs> yeah. else. 
but he sits on the school board association, sits on or was or makes money because maybe he gives classes or represents them. So in one way or fashion, connected. He, he's connected to, that's a good word, to the school board association, the superintendent association, the Pennsylvania Department of Education, the Pennsylvania Department of Health, CD, everything you don't want in your school. Because our school board members should be like, get out of here. I'm here to protect you. We got it all wrong. We let our school board members go for so long. Again, if we were in there, we would need leadership. Hey, guys, what's going on here tonight? Oh, we're going to vote on this. You got to say, I first, I second the motion and we would need coaching. Yeah. Well, guess where they're getting the coaching? Not from us. They're getting it from solicitors and from mm -hmm. seasoned district people, right? So you got a 30 year, 13 year superintendent who wants all that garbage to come in here with a solicitor that's on his side. So they're unwittingly or unknowingly meat puppets. Uh, our school board? Yes. Absolutely. Until you make them either respect you or fear you, they're always going to respect or fear the solicitor. I have on hot mic, one of our school board members saying, hey, I'm voting yes. I don't want to lose my house. I'm like, you dick. What, what does what, that mean? What did that solicitor say to him to make him think he's going to lose his house, that his sovereign immunity was going to be broken if he didn't have the harshest mask mandate possible? You can't sue somebody for disease. We would have been sued in the Bolivian already. You know, so that's not one of the reasons you can have your sovereign immunity broke. Well, this guy lied to that guy, made that guy vote that way, and he had it on hot mic. You know, mm. and then when I bar grieve, I mean, it seems like a terrible, terrible conflict of interest with the solicitors. Look, it's specifically who writes who writes our laws in America. What politicians are who who gets the, what legis what what branch of our government writes the laws? The legislative branch. Wrong. Okay. Try again. Ex executive. Wrong. Judicial? Try Judicial? Again. Wrong. Try again. It's the bar attorneys. Who's writing it? It's not them. It's bar attorneys writing it for them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they just present it and vote. Yeah. It's, like, it's like lobbyists. It's, it's like, a there's, yeah, there's, my, my there's, attorney. There's, there's, there's many examples of actual actual bills that have been presented and passed that that it was it was a uh, uh, copy and paste yeah. from uh, from a uh, bureaucrat, or not a bureaucrat, but lobbyists. So lo and they even having their names on it. If you want, so I can't go to the border and stop like uh, illegal immigrants who come across the yeah. border. I can, I'll run out of money. Wife's like, hey, we're going to get four clothes on, get home. Yeah. Okay, I got to come home, right? So you, you can't do, so I say, control the things you can control. Do the things you can do in your sphere of control, okay? And you have to be willing to let some of that other stuff go. Our school boards, and as I say it, I don't know how influential this will be to make them want to quickly fix this, but our school boards are probably the most unprotected, not like with security, but most unprotected. Uh, then if you, if I had try to have this kind of argument with our representatives and our, uh, and, and, and Congress people, they'd have so many walls of protection up, you know, like secretaries and you got to get an appointment and I'd never be able to talk to them. Yeah. Every, every month I get to see my school board eye to eye and I get to correct them. I couldn't have that privilege. You know, they have walls of protection up. And again, not security because some people blow this out like I'm making a threat. They don't have the same security of having walls of protection up, like just to fend off these uh, accusations of being unlawful and illegal. In fact, I can have my school board inside of a courtroom every 30 days. And I believe I'm supposed to. I'm going to practice that, that if they turn the light switch on wrong time, I'm going to have them court in 30 days. I, I, it's nitpicking. You're damn right. Because for 40 years, my forefathers before me weren't doing this. So I'm going to fast forward this. So my kids got it made. I'm going to fast forward this. So people are the very first action, whether you're turning a light switch on, whether you're voting for a curriculum, the first thing you're supposed to do is protect your individual rights and your individual rights and his individual rights. Not this collective crap. It says your individual God given rights. You're supposed to be that government official is supposed to protect them. So if 900 people say, yeah, I'm all for butt plugs in being taught in second grade. And I'm like, that's unconstitutional. Okay, we, we got to stop that program. If you guys, you 900 parents want that, get that in the private. You're in the public school system. It's considered unconstitutional. None of you are getting it. So that's why I believe if you go after the constitutionality. I things, never thought I'd ask this question. Why would butt plugs be unconstitutional in that yeah. scenario? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Dan, write down that this has got to be a clip that we play. <laughs> I'm just. And, and, why but, but, are but, butt plugs but here's, unconstitutional? And I, and so here's the crazy thing. Like we make jokes of it. But yeah. It's happening. I rarely. So I try not even talk. I used to start. I actually talk about this stuff. Then I'm like, no, no. But why would, why would something like that be? Because your children are your property. And they're trespassing on your property. 
It's against your religion. And if you're not Catholic, Christian, or anything else, it's also against your rights of conscience. That's the difference in Pennsylvania. We have a right of conscience. It's stronger than the federal declar- uh, bill of rights because we have a freedom of religion. Well, guess when you try to use that today, guess what they say? When's the last time you took Holy Communion? When's the last time you attended church? Did you stay awake the whole time during church? If you did all those, then we'll give you a mass exemption for religious freedom. Like, no, I'm not asking for but it. But in an Article Three court, it's just black and white. Done. Remember, 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 don't ask, don't tell? Yeah. And there was movies. There was things like in movies where they're yeah. like, uh, kiss them. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, I'm gay. I can't go do that. Oh, mm. kiss him. Like they used to make people like do stuff like that to prove yeah. that they were either telling the truth or lying. I gave my- And what you're saying is, is that like in Pennsylvania, uh, the freedom of conscience. Freedom of conscience. Yeah. It, it, it actually trumps freedom of religion. And I hate to say it, but God is good. And the Quakers were smart and they snuck that in there and they're going to try and take it away and they're going to amend and rewrite and they're going to blank that but out. You one. can't amend that because it's in the Declaration of Rights. Because it's inviolate. Yeah. So we study, just spend a week knowing what the word inviolate so, means. So it does it. So, okay. So for to, those who to, don't. To the end of the world. So that, that, that original writing of that original uh, declaration of rights mm-hmm. uh, in perpetuity throughout time, as long as the Commonwealth exists not, and, and there's not meteor strikes. Not a, not a Supreme Court, not a, not a hundred percent. But not even another document. Can, not another can, document. It's the first, it always comes there. The Magna Carta still exists. It's, yeah. it's there first. So. Oh God, I lost something. I really wanted you to. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's okay. I was oh butt plugs. <laughs> oh, okay. Let, let's go back to that. So yeah. so there was a day when I clearly wanted to argue that stuff because I have my own moral views. But then, you know, you gotta be be conscious, right? If someone's right at conscious, somebody might love being gay and think their kids need to learn that early. You gotta let them you gotta let everybody be free. Freedom's a verb. Let them have it. Yeah. But don't you dare make this public policy. Yeah. Because then in fact you're breaking my constitutional right as an individual. And if you have one person stand up that can shut down that program, trust me, it will shut that program down. Because right now, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Yes. Oh, back at the camera. The oh. third time. <laughs> so right now what's happening, and I get it. I have secondhand knowledge until I have firsthand experience. And I'm willing to go through the minefield first and say, in fact, it's clear up to here. So I want that. So everything I've said to this point, I'm clear up to here. You can hear my hesitation when I talked about whether the attorney loses bar card altogether, whether he can get back in once he surrenders his bar card because he can't come in as a bar carrying member in, in Article 3. But in fact, does he surrender it forever? I don't know that answer. If he loses, I think he certainly does. He probably has to go, go to the gallows and hang himself because he embarrassed himself. <laughs> but at my school board right now, to, be, to get further down uh, the, land, the line, landmine uh, field to know how far I can take people. So yeah, it's clear up to here. Mm -hmm. I have a $1.95 million lawsuit. It's not a lawsuit. Forgive me. It's a claim against each man and woman on the school board because when they in fact violated my rights and took my rights of no due process away from me, my God given right to speak and redress my government. And they took that from me and to have the liberties and freedoms to be with my children on the school prop. And they took it from me. They, my counsel want me to do 50 million per school board member. I'm like, just let me time to think. So I actually did math. I did some past research on past uh, studies of uh, Supreme Court rulings. Mm-hmm. And I came up with 1.95 million per school board member. So that's in fact what I'm doing is a 1.95 school board member claim. And it's to them directly. So I don't take that from the school because they're worried about taking money from the school district. I don't want money from the school district. I want it from the men and the women who are violating my personal rights. That were given to me by God, not by some constitution, because there's constitutional rights, there's privileges. I got God-given rights that you took from me. It's 1.95 million per person. It will force into arbitration. So why go 50 million? It's going to go to arbitration. And then, in fact, and I'll tell you here now. So when it comes to arbitration, and that one school board member that's poor says, "I got his three thousand dollars," I might very well forgive him because you're supposed to forgive those who trespass mm-hmm. against you. That's going to sound crazy, but in fact, what I'm going to do. They say, I will forgive that. But since we opened up arbitration, I want your bonds. And in fact, I can get payment from the bonds. I can forgive them and let him have his $3,000. But when I get his bonds, then he can never serve again. And that's important. Uh, it, listening to this is, is really interesting because it's put a lot of thoughts that with things we've talked about over the past two and a half, three years, you know, uh, you know, being business owners, having our businesses shut down. 
being threatened by politicians that if we complained that, you know, not only would they not, would we not get any of the money that is coming to help us from all the money we lost. Is this done? Is this uh, it's opening in like a week. So it might take forever, but start reading in the private membership associations. When you do a private. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah, Who's that fuck? All right, I'm going to do that. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like, and, and we talked about this. Like, we had literally publicly and privately government officials threatening us because we complained. Mm -hmm. Because we got a bunch of businesses together to write a letter saying, hey, this is the stuff we're facing. Like, we need help or we need you to, like, help us or get out of the way. Yeah. You know, and to know things like this where we could have actually, there are, are measurable steps that we could take to actually remedy that situation you know, it's yeah, it's a little bit too late for that situation, but it's good to know for the next. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, listen. I gotta tell you guys something. I, I don't know what to do here. I always throw my phone number out there for friends on Facebook. Oh and Jesus! I know don't. it's but okay. hey, hear me out for a second. How about a, how about an email? I'm look. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking for advice from experienced people. Do we want to so, do we want to tell them to contact us and maybe we can connect them yeah, that yeah, way? Because I, I there's get so terrified much because that's how you get doxxed. No, I know, I know. And, and no one and no one should why. ever self dox themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so Marky's home address is six nine six nine Palestine Drive. <laughs> I, I promise anybody, whether it's an opposition or a proponent, th that I will sit down with anybody. I'll probably start going with friends, right? So bring friends so we all can have witnesses because from the mouths oh, of two. There's a tongue canic school board meeting in our future for sure. It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so from the mouths of two is equal to a notary from the mouths of two witnesses. That's equal to a notary. All right. So you don't need to be getting notarized. You can just have two witnesses notarize your own documents if you want to save that five bucks. But no one wants to do this. So just go get your five bucks. From the mouths of four, you could put a man to death. Really? That exists today. It's not going away, but no one knows it exists. But from the mouths of four, you could be put to death, right? So that means four witnesses have drawn you into potentially a trial by jury, not a jury by trial. This is so esoteric that people are going to think I have a second head. It's there. It exists. It's our tool to get back. These documents are so great. Even though you feel the way you feel with the Constitution, I do too now. Because the constitutions, when you see them get rewrit, you know why they were rewrit mm -hmm. to make them more corporate, mm -hmm. to help corporate. They created a, a, a U.S. citizen. That's beautiful. Holy cow. Almost the entire population is a U.S. citizen. So this, again, makes me look like two heads. But when you become a U.S. citizen, what are you? It, so this goes back to the, to the British, right? When we kick their ass, the king's like, hey, don't make us leave, please. So the king is smart. Mm -hmm. he's, he's not a king for, for no good reason. He's a king because he's smart. He basically said, in fact, hey, I will help reconstruct. We concede. You can have your freedom, All right? You, your independence. You're free. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to leave my soldiers behind. My soldiers will become your municipal servants. We're going to rebuild those courthouses we burnt down, your churches that we burnt down. We're going to go ahead and rebuild them for you. So while Johnny's out there in the field with Maybelline, you know, hoeing up their, uh, their potatoes, trying to get business going again. You know, they look over their shoulders and they see these roads being uh, repaired, you know, because of the cannons being drug around. They see all the, they can hear the courthouse and the church is being built. They're thinking, hey, we kicked their asses and now these municipal servants are licking our boots. Or were they? Because now the king said, hey, I'm going to leave some gold behind with my officers in the courthouse. Come get your grants. Come get your loans. We'll help you get your commerce going. Because really that's what this is all about. Commerce, right? The UCC. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, the, they were the best people to do it. You know, the king was the best person to do it. He had he had maritime law in place because when you brought your potatoes to the stinking port, you want to get paid now, so mm -hmm. you make a contract. And those potatoes, whether they go or not, are protect. They're going to get there, get their money, and pay the, you know, get paid a fee for traveling that over there for them. So you know, you use commerce law to do commerce, do business. You know, back then we had United States. United States of America and the United States of America. Nobody knows the difference, but one was a corporation, one was geographical. In order to do business around the world, you needed a corporation. That's fair. I get it. So, but most people didn't know what that meant, right? They can barely think about how long it took to get a message across. I can, I can, some, someone's probably calling me now from, from California. Well, right? tell me, call them back. So, here, here, <laughs> here, so in the blink of an eye, we're talking to California. Think about how long it took that message across. Those damn yeah. Pony Expresses have just caught up to us in the name of the internet. And I get it, it can be bad. But I would never have known the stuff I'd known because the man I was was going to be quiet, was going to be meek, was going to live my life, my, my kids, rise my kids up, and I was going to fade away. 
But now they gave me the internet. How dare they? They give me a reason to stay awake at night. How dare they? And then they tried to hurt my family. How dare they? So now <laughs> that's empowerment. That's now weak. it's game on. Now it's how you get going, right? So we're good to go. So when the king left his men behind, Illinois is throwing everybody the finger right now. You can go on their website, Illinois uh, District Attorney's website, and it says one. They the mean the Attorney General, th- the DA, District Attorney. That's district. What they have there for the whole state. No, no, it's it's in one of the District Attorney's websites. Okay, okay, okay. In Illinois, it says that the number one mission of the District Attorney's office is to protect the interests of the Crown. Really. Yep. They, you can find it in your courthouse too. You just got to look for it. It's probably in archives. It's inviolate. It doesn't go away. The entities that we create are still pledged there. So when you guys become U.S. citizens, you in fact look like you live. So your zip code, any zip code. Uh, let's say 18509. All right. It's fine. That's actually a district out of D.C. It looks like you domicile in D.C. and you're doing commerce in residence at whatever your address is right now. So you're doing commerce for DC because you're sending federal dollars back down there. And that's what's paying back to reconstruction. That's what cr- creates all these stupid uh, bankruptcies you hear about America going through. It's all old related stuff that get us tied into. They took our money in 1933. I'm sorry, they took our gold in 1933. So the gold standard used to mm-hmm. back our money. Yeah. So that bankruptcy said, hey, we want all your gold, but you can't. We need to survive. Our constitution says we need gold and silver. Well, give it to us, you know, and we'll put it here to grow interest. And in fact, uh, we'll create HR 192, which creates an instrument for people to pay their debt. The Constitution says you got to pay debt with gold or silver. Well, at the time, they took it all. So they created, if you would, they, now our money's backed by people. The full faith and credit of the American people it used to be backed by gold, gold and silver. But now it's the full faith and credit of the American people. Still a good deal. Could you see those trees up on the mountains? They can't turn themselves into pianos and into furniture. By themselves, it takes human resource, right? HR, human resource. So it takes HR, it takes human resource to do that. So it's okay to back money with that, but tell the friggin' people. They make you have to find on your own. When I went to learn how to protect my family from lawsuits and being arrested so I can get the longest stretch I can doing this, I learned so much stuff I, I don't even want to talk about because people literally will, won't, will, won't listen to us because it's very esoteric. It's like I was emotionally drained after two hours or 36 hours of lecture. I didn't know what to do. What I learned in two hours, I'm like, what the hell do I do with this knowledge now? Mm. I learned stuff I didn't need, but now I realize I do need it. Because I may protect myself from these lawsuits and this arrest, but I better learn how to protect my family too, because that's how, the, when they come gunning for me, and I don't mean with, you know, with guns, but yeah. when they come trying to get me for speeding ticket not paid, mm-hmm. and they just blow it out of proportion, I have to be able to, to stand on, my, on what I know. So that's all that other course I didn't think I needed. I, in fact, need because I know, I know more. I know your house is supposed to be held in a patent. Your constitution says hold, hold your land in a patent. It's, it's, it's right in the constitution. Our local governments made us put it in warranty deeds, which makes them tenants in common, which means when you screw up, they get to take it. If you kept it in a land patent, <laughs> you could be a murderer and your land is still in your family's name. You'd be a murderer today, you're going to lose your house. Now, that's an extreme. But if you, if you have trouble with a foreclosure, you have trouble with uh, making a payment, or you do run over somebody's foot, then come through your house through tenants in common. But if that was held in a land patent, not a lawsuit, not a government, nobody could take it. Everybody's got to put their houses in a land patent. If you plan on living there for the rest of your life- Give me a pen. Put your house in a land patent. It's, it's a process. You can learn it yourself or pay to get it done. I'm trying to do it, if you would- Myself, because I don't have the money to get done. It's like $1,800 to do it yourself. But in fact, if I could put my house in a land patent, I'm braver. Like I'm brave now. When you see me on the video, I'm brave because I know what I'm standing on. But I also know they can come from my house and they can come from my car. Because my car isn't, doesn't have a, a, a manufacturer certificate of, of, of uh, ownership. What does it have? It has a title. So I titled, I registered my car. So in fact, the government's a tenant in common with me. What did me and my wife do when we got married? We get we registered for a marriage license. Anytime you register something, when I told you God created man, man created the constitution, the constitution created the government, the government created all these registries, which gives you a title, which puts you beneath them. Mm. You have to remember you're way up here on the totem pole. You're number two after God. If you believe in God, if you don't believe in God, you're number one. But the minute you say, yeah, I'll register my gun as a, as a concealed carry carrier, you just give yourself a title as 
concealed carrier. Before that, you had the right to bear arms. You were a bearer of arms, period. But the minute you said, I want to be this guy, you, you went beneath somebody. So eventually, you, if you can't, if, if you don't think you take this all in, because it took me years to take this all in, it took almost three years to get all this information. And mm -hmm. it's a lot. Yeah, we're not going to do it in a few hours. Yeah. yeah. I want to find a way to let people get a hold of me so I can help them the best I can. Mm. And there's people better than me that I can steer them to. I, I can help them up to this point to see if they want to dabble this. Because once you start this, you have to be willing to stand on. You can't just say, hey, give me that form you filled out. Yeah. If I do that and, and you register instead of record it, game over. So I, I think for a lot of people listening, and hopefully people are still listening, um, this is a lot to take in. It's a lot. Yeah. Like it's, it, 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 the blinders are off, you know, they don't understand it. It makes no sense. And I think for some people, they might hear certain things and, and, and they can't wrap their minds around it. But um, there's something I think, and I hope I've got this right, very symbolic that maybe will help people that are like this, this version of America doesn't exist. I think there's something very symbolic and I think it's symbolized very blatantly by your two lapel pins. Yeah. That some people don't even know what the one on your left is. My uh, my drill instructor had said something to me that was pretty profound. Yeah. Blew my mind. Now, so at the time, you know, 20, 30 years ago, everything was still a possibility. Nuclear war or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was only a possibility back then? I yeah. thought it was a possibility today. So when he was screaming <laughs> at us, you know, he says, when, when, because somebody wasn't shaved right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that, that means your gas mask is not going to seal right. And That's he's, how we got Hitler. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he's <laughs> like. At least that mustache. He's like, in fact, he goes, when everything goes away, we will rise from the rubble as Marines. We will use the Constitution to rebuild our country. You're not going to, you, you don't use a Constitution. You know, the Constitution can literally rebuild a country because it's mm -hmm. a perfect Constitution. Mm -hmm. Is everything okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um. He said that. So I believe that from the rubble, mm -hmm. someone's supposed to rise up and reinstate the constitution. It goes back to almost your first, if, if there was a way of going back and splicing what he said in the beginning, mm -hmm. think about that. So, and also the fact that I'm like, yeah, I'm no longer a constitutionalist. I'm more like, I don't know what to call it. I'm a bill of righteousness or declarationist, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Because if you're a constitutionalist, great, but I got to come up with that phrase. Whoever it does is going to get a great t-shirt. Bill of righteousness. Bill of Righteousness? Yeah, I like it. Uh, it makes Copyright you, What a Week podcast. <laughs> Did he just steal that? Yeah, he's, a, he's a thief. Lock that door. Yeah. <laughs> I'm safe in my corner. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 in fact, we have to just use what we have. I learned a lot of stuff by accident, right? I didn't want it, but I can't unhear what I hear. I can't un, uh, unsee what I see. So, two plus two equals four. Mm-hmm. Oh, here you go. So get if him, I if I him. if I wrote that down, mm -hmm. T O O equals T O. I'm sorry, T O plus T O O equals F O R. Awesome. Okay? So you have to. So my point is this: that I want to read it when you tell me something. Yeah. I, I well, that's why I say it's like the symbolic nature, yep. and that's why I want you to tell people what your lapel pin is there. Okay. So this, this is, is. I think this is going to blow people's minds as much as anything else, but they can see it. Yeah, they can see it. Right. They can, in fact, see it, and you can actually research this. You're probably going to get six, seven, 12 different versions of it. Um, so eventually, you, you'll have to shake off the algorithms where it directs you, and then you find a way. Uh, Napoleon Hill in 1937 said, if you need, to, if something is so urgent and you need to know it, go read it for yourself. He's talking about going to the halls of Congress, the Library of Congress. You know, a lot of us think we don't have access to it. Now you do. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't mean that much to you, you don't want to waste your energy on that, let it go. Like someone told me there's a UFO up and either up or down on the poles. I don't care about that UFO right now. Maybe one day when I'm done with my school board, I want to know about it. Right. I'll go take a plane trip up there, hike in there and see it for myself. I want to see it for myself to know that two plus two equals four. Then I'll believe it. It's, I just, it's so hard to trust it. If it's not yeah. important, if I don't want to spend my money on that, on that plane trip, I'm not going. Just, it doesn't matter if it's there. If you want to know it's there, then you can have it. I'm worried right now about my school board trying to, the sphere of control is here. So the flag that we know is, is a war flag. I'm about to give something away. So, the American flag that you see like at every- Yeah, the American flag yeah. that we see today is our war flag. Flags were the way you did business back in the day, right? 
if a, if a ship got captured by the Brits, they would put a gold frill around it, run their flag up, run our flag up underneath it with the frill on it. would said, hey, it's a captured American ship. Don't blow us out of the water. It's communication, you know, mm-hmm. plus showing off. Look what we caught. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a... <sighs> I don't know what to do. Is this a trade secret? What is this? No, What's maybe not too many people will get this, so I'll be all right. All right. Hopefully you guys aren't, aren't, aren't popular with this, but Tunkhannock Area School District has a gold frilled flag hanging in their auditorium, mm-hmm. which means the enemy is bragging they captured us. That's bragging they captured our school. Now, I don't know if they know what they have up there, but now that they're telling us, they might keep it there because I'm they don't like me. But I want that flag down. I've been milking this eighth grader to come up here and get that flag down somehow. <laughs> get that flag down, go to the American Legion, tell them you want a new flag, just make it neater, cleaner, but don't have to go to the frill. And this is mm-hmm. why. But, you know, now that they know, they might keep it up there because it's throwing me yeah, but, at the, but, at the, but at the end of the day, like, it, it's still, symbols mean things. Yeah, and, no, and, and, that, that, that's what that means. There's no means symbols. It's, it, it means that's it's a captured, captured flag. That's yeah. captured and our schools are being captured. Yeah. You know? So, um, Technic- all- technically, you should not allow a gold frilled thing it's anywhere, weird. unless they think they're captured. And, and mm-hmm. when you say not allowed, you better you remember freedom's a, a, a verb, right? Yeah, got to go do something about it. Yeah. So, so if they do it, you have the freedom to. Yeah. So I'm trying to do it like undercover. It's not so much not undercover anymore. anymore. But um, hopefully, there's enough good people like uh, in Tunkhannock. But, but that's what it really means, and it means it. 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 Yeah. it, it, it for people who know what that means, when they see it, it hurts. Maybe means more to me because from being from the service and the yeah. Marine, and, and and I was willing to die Those for my flag. Matter, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Now this flag here, I think, was only run for like fourteen days or seventeen days in America. Can I can I guess what that is? Hey, go ahead. Is it the peacetime flag? It's the peace flag. So also our, known as the civil flag, right? Right. So yeah. what happens is we get caught up in this uh, corporate wars, which I didn't know anything about when I was in the Marines. So when I was in the Marines. I was fighting for all my brothers and sisters. I was fighting for America, keeping the bad guys away from our borders because my son is doing the same thing and right. I can't take that from him. Right. I learned about these two flags while my son was in transition to saying, I'm going to the Marines. I don't want my son to go serve a corporate war. I don't get that choice because there's, there's a president and there's a commander in chief, right? So you have the president and commander in chief executive officer of the corporation. So if you finish that, that's what it is. You got the president of the continental United States, right? That's the geographical one. Mm -hmm. So the president of the United States, and then you have the chief executive officer of the corporation. So he poses as both. And I think that's how some people have the flub blub of whether or not Biden's really the president, or is he just a chief executive officer of the, I don't know. I can't control that. I don't care to know that answer. I want my school board to be legal and lawful. Mm-hmm. So I, I have one, one. So remember this representatives and Congress people, 70% of them get their teeth cut as school, school board, board members. members. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's the launching point. Yep. And they might not do it on purpose. We're, they're a bunch of legalized, um, compartmentalized legal idiots. Right. So if we can straighten these people out and realize, in fact, did you turn that light switch on constitutionally? Did you vote that curriculum in constitution? That's first. That's not after statutory. And trust me, they need a statutory attorney teaching them about all the school freaking policy they allowed to get put in place. It would fill up this room three times to educate a kid. How many chicken nuggets do you give them? At what time do you feed them? How long could the school bus trip be? I get it. You need a statutory attorney to make sure you keep that shit right. Yeah. But you also need a constitutional counsel zooming into those executive sessions saying, hey, this knucklehead's lying to you. He's going to get you in a constitutional trap. There's the first thing they're supposed to do is measure every action against the constitution first. You either align with it or you don't. There's no gray area. So if, if nine of you or eight of you or seven of you or five of you say, hey, that doesn't line up. Good. All that shit's gone. Now we only need half of the stuff to worry about. Now let's argue statutorily about this last half. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you do need that. Is it going to be one way going this way or one way going that way around the school? You do need some statutory rules. I get it. But nobody's measuring nothing against the Constitution first. And that's what they're supposed to do first, not last. The school board association should be run out of business. They should, we should all say, no, don't hire them. They're paying them $7,000 to write school board policy for me and Tunkhannock that matches stuff out of Philadelphia. No, thank you. 
my school board members don't have the kayons enough to say, no, thank you. So since they're my public servants and I am their master, which again sounds ugly, that's the way it's written. I have all the authority and power and I will stop them. I will prove them to be unconstitutional. I'm not going to say you can't do that and make them do it. If they want to draw me into a court, you're going to come into my court and I'm going to prove it unconstitutional. You're going to make it go away. You're going to get out of the way. And then we move forward constitutionally first, which makes you feel better because that's in fact what we're supposed to do is constitutional first, not last. And, and quite frankly, use the Declaration of Rights only if you have to. Mm-hmm. Because it's where the common law is. That's what makes this possible. Common law, Article 3, is what makes this whole thing possible, not the Constitution. I got to kind of reprogram myself. I just thought about that today. I got better today than yesterday. Mm. This is more about the Declaration of Rights and Bill of Rights. We don't even need the Constitution. All the Constitution can be can be considered, in my opinion, is like a bylaws for Corporation America. Yeah, I mean, and, and honestly, like listening to you talk and the way you're describing it, you know, both uh, on a state level and on a federal level, that is the best way to describe it. It's the bylaws. It's the operational agreement yep. for how the elected government functions. And when they break them, it's maladministration. That's right. That, that, that's a but that only applies to them, right? But when they, they turn, yeah, and when they turn it into a, a, a maladministration, that's that's when we get to go in as jurisdiction. Because when they send me a letter in all caps, I'm like, no, thank you. I'm not taking that letter. Take it back. You either start sending me letters in my name because whatever I'm taking, I'm saying I'm in that jurisdiction. I know that's all caps George isn't that guy. That's my trust. And they're trying to get into it when I accept that. And now all of a sudden they wrap me into a lawsuit. They can actually suck money out of my account, which people don't believe, but just look at Canada. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so or Kanye, so we are, we are in commerce with our schools. Yeah. Okay. We are, we pay them money with our taxes. They take an oath of office. There's two wet signatures. And guess what? We don't have a wet signature anymore. They make us do this swiping bullshit. Mm. There's like eight things that makes a contract legal. So by rule, yeah, I'm not in contract with my school because it takes two wet ink signatures. They are the only ones doing a wet ink signature. Those take their oath of office. Okay. So until they get my wet ink signature, it's already dismissed. In Article 3 court, this is done. Where's the wet ink signature? It's not there. Okay. Case dismissed. So this finger swiping bullshit that we do with this, this, okay, fine. It makes things go faster. Let's slow the hell down. The Amish aren't doing so bad. Let's slow down a little bit. Maybe not go Amish. But let's slow down a little bit. This finger swipe, and all of a sudden you just swiped your rights away. We have a school down in we have a school down in Big Springs that said in order to get the best um, activity or the, the most outreach, we're going to do passive consent, which means they're going to put this rule that you're all going to do this survey, and we're going to put it at the bottom of the web page for three months. And if nobody argues, it's now law. It's, or it's all, now it's a statute. It's a rule. It's going to happen. So if you don't know enough to opt out of that, you accidentally opt into it through, through, through passive, passive, consent. Acqui- passive consent or acquiescence. Hmm. So that's how they get us. And then Jimmy Carter didn't help us when he created in local parenthesis, you know? So when he created that, that basically says we, we need parents' consent, so they create passive consent. They put it somewhere on this crazy web page. You don't answer to it. You're consenting to it. So the only way out of this trouble is somebody to stand up and say, that's unconstitutional. Someone has to be willing to go through all that garbage. Somehow we have to come up with a good statutory rule for them to follow that says, if it's not reading, writing, or arithmetic, it needs a parent's consent. In writing, two wet ink signatures. Because two wet ink signature means there's been full disclosure. If there's not been full disclosure, then this doesn't fly. That alone would drive them nuts thinking they have to go sign a document with every parent, every school. There. They would stop doing this crazy curriculum. If you just follow the Constitution, this, this crazy curriculum that you might hate, that I don't even care to mention, because I don't want to get into some, I don't want someone to discredit it's, it's me. It's the weeds, man. Yeah. It's, yeah it, they it, drag you into it. Every week there's something new, something yeah. crazy. If you ask them to be constitutional, this all gets fixed. Don't ask them. I'm sorry. Demand. We get to demand an order. You know what disorderly conduct is? I just figured this out the other night, which made me better. They're gonna, they, they think they got me with disorderly conduct because I'm exercising my constitutional right. You can never turn a constitutional right or the exercise of one into a crime or a sanction. Done. It's already been case lawed. Mm. Right? That's done. That's what my school did to me. That's what makes them going to be in trouble. But I'll tell you what disorderly conduct is. I order you to remove all unconstitutional policy. When they don't do it, that's called dis 
ordered them because I ordered them to do something as their master. They didn't do it. That's disorderly. That's what that means. Disorderly. They, they were disorderly. We think it'd be making a loud noise in public's disorderly, whatever. I gave you an order. You didn't follow. That's disorder, dishonor. So in fact, they're the ones being disorderly. So wait till I perfect that. And I, because I think we could do citizens arrest, by the way. And I, oh, can, I hope I get Can you that come right. back for that one? I, yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you a quick question while we wrap this up? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were just going to start it. No, Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. You, I, I, I could tell pretty early my on My brain's this, broken. I can't feel my butt. Well, we've had one or two different people have come back on multiple times, and I could tell very early on, and this was like, oh, he's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. This is, this is yeah, a, this is a long This is a mini series. All right, before I let you shut me down. I'm not trying to shut you down. I want to ask you a question <laughs> that might lead you in a direction, right? Okay. Is you're not fighting for one side. Mm -mm. You're fighting for all sides. Do I have that correct? Yes. I, I, I don't know if you'll pick it up, but I, in my, in my Tunkhannock, um last meeting where they, they use that as the premise to, to ban me or trespass me. Yeah. One of my opposition ladies who was behind me, I can always hear months prior. I was going, <sighs> right. Yeah. I could tell she wasn't my friend. She became my friend. And I said, look, there's going to be a day you need something from me. They're doing something unconstitutional to you. You can call me. Whatever it is, if it's unconstitutional, I'm by your side the whole time. A week before I got my no due process, there was a mother who got a hold of me 2.30 in the morning. She didn't realize I was going to be awake. She was just texting me. I immediately texted her back. She was, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were awake. I said, or, so I, she said, they have me signing a document in the morning that's going to remove my son, you know, for the next couple of years. You know, he just came from that school. He doesn't want to go back there. He, he has like a major, like he does twitches and everything. So, he's yeah. very, you know, kids are just rude to him. I can't say it's normal because, you know, whatever it is, he can't get a fair shot. So behaviorally, he is off, right? And educationally, he, he is off. Medically, he is off. So he's a child with special needs, period. So... She tried to explain to me what happens. Her two boys are making an accusation against him and it's just getting railroaded. And she's got to go sign these documents. She said, don't sign nothing. Meet me at the donut shop in the morning. So at like 6.30 in the morning, we met there and I printed off the policy, which is their policy that binds them. I didn't read. I read the first. How many pages is this policy? It was 30 pages. It's basically what governs the protection of uh, children with, with special needs. Okay. Because they're the weakest amongst us. They have special needs. Yeah. The first four policies the first four lines were broken if she didn't sign that paper it would have exceeded a certain time period which would have made five for five in the first five lines it would have so violated five out of five, first five and, policies. and it's a 30 page document we didn't get past the first five lines i said don't do nothing i said i don't this is beyond me right now because i knew i'd get better i said you need to get but i did know because of my research that children with needs can get a free attorney so it made it easier to say go get an attorney and when she's done getting an attorney and representing her son as an entity, we can go back at her, at them for individuals, for the man who did this to him. So she didn't sign it. She, she put him on speakerphone and I said, ask him what he wants this for. Cause he, my, I have a flat tire. I said, tell him something, tell him you can't make it. So well, what's it for? Well, you, we need you to sign this document. It'll keep your son from going to jail. I just, you know, I want to go back to old George, right? Yeah. I was so mad when I heard that. How dare this incompetent human being threatened his mother with putting this kid in jail. Who wouldn't sign mm -hmm. that document? That would have been a cause of action. And they would have made bank on that for three years mm -hmm. on that kid, creating that cause of action and put him in this judicial school. He didn't deserve it. Turned out after getting proper due process, the other two boys lied. Now I hope they got due process. I don't know if they did. I'd like to find out if they did because good chances are they didn't get due process either. But just a helpless mother. A helpless mother with a special mm -hmm. needs. So now the weakest among us didn't get due process. And for two years, I've been battling my school and they thought they're going to give me the same lack of due process. So that means everybody in between is going to get screwed by the school board because they're lost their minds. And if they haven't lost their minds, it's been altered by this ignorant solicitor, which is a, it seems to be a trend. I have not seen a good solicitor yet. They all lie to their school board members. And I once heard that that their law is designed to create conflict, right? That's why we remove controversy, you know? Um, okay, we're at two hours, right, Dan? Ooh. Yeah, just about. That's, yeah. Okay. That was a good one. Um, would you mind coming back? I, yeah, but this is what you, I want okay, to say. Going. 
So my Tunkhannock Area School District, right? So uh, maybe you can put some phone numbers, some websites, give them some emails. Do you have an email? We can we can say your email. Yeah. I, I feel very uncomfortable saying your 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 cell phone because because okay. yeah, yeah, let's keep your phone to yourself. Because yeah. because and you know <laughs> but why? Definitely man. your home address and your blood type. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you, <laughs> well, and I gotta tell you, the only reason I say it, I want to let you know that I'm with such honor and clean hands. And I'm not just saying to be fancy. I, I, it's, I'm saying that I don't fear any man. Like I would suggest people don't come to do me harm because it will always backfire. Here's on you. here's here's my rationalization yeah. behind that. Right. I think you're doing good work. I think you need to continue to do that good work. I think if we give lunatics, all right, I, it, it will, it will, it'll, it, there's it'll, some it, naivete. That, your, your positive energy is now yeah. going to be overcome by negative psychopaths. Okay. Uh, I'll see let you I, guys, see what I mean? I'm going to let you guys protect me. I don't know this side of it. Yeah. That 1 million views or whatever, that's new to me. Yeah. But I also know I have a responsibility now that because my lifespan doing this has gotten shortened. I agree. By doing this, because sooner or later they're going to come. But that's why I wanted to talk to you, because I don't want, I, like, two years ago when they were trying to do this in the Abington Heights School District, my sister went to a meeting and just said, make it a choice for the mass. Mm -hmm. Don't force it. And the paper, that the Scranton Times the next day called all the parents that went there, including my sister, terrorists. Yeah. And that's when I went, I'm done with that shit. Yeah. So I want to have conversations with people like you, who some people on one, like, who the newspaper would think is a lunatic to say, hey, this guy's 10 times more educated than you. He understands the law. He understands yeah. human nature. He's actually at his heart a humanist mm -hmm. and he cares about people. And it doesn't matter whether you, you, you look, I don't believe in kitty litter in the bathrooms taking a shit. Yeah. But you're not trying to stop those kids. Yep. You're trying to say what's legal, what's lawful. You can't violate that. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you're a fascist, a Republican, yeah. a Democrat, a, a, a Hindu. It doesn't matter. And I respect that. Many people brought that kitty litter thing to me. And my only answer is you give me a selfie next to it. You give I me haven't seen a photo yet. That's why you I don't give believe me, it. You give me the policy that's yeah. writ that says it could be in there. Until then, mm -hmm. it's a bunch of, it's a ghost. It's, it's a science fiction film. It's very distracting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but it, as soon as it shows up, then in fact, we tear it down because their statutes say you can't have hazardous material in the open like that. So biohazard. Yeah, Shit. that's my art. My argument against people who say that, where I'm like, you know, it's fun to say, oh, they're putting kitty litter in the bathrooms for kids yeah. to shit, and the Department of Health would be there in a heartbeat. Do you know, if they're I doing fear, their job and they're not crazy, my biggest fear is that it actually exists mm. and they're keeping it quiet. And but it gets out as a ghost. But we're gonna get that one knucklehead that does it, and as soon as we finally get that confirmation, mm. it's came on. Then we just take it down as unconstitutional. Because in fact, they break their maladministration because there's rules against having hazardous material out in the open, you know? So I, I have a really good friend who I'd like you to meet someday. And he, I said, to, you know, I, we've talked about stuff like this and Mike has been there and Dan's been there for that. And I, you know, I've asked him, I said, what, what, what do we do? Cause you feel helpless. You feel yeah. like, because you're, you're so far down the road, you're so far down the road doing it the wrong way. It's so hard to get people to go back to like, hey, do you realize what like this is all about and what your rights are and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he said, he said, Americans need to rediscover America. Yeah. And I see you doing that. And I'm grateful that you're doing it. Yeah, we're going to be good. We're going to we're, we're going to start at the school board level. I feel like we're practicing our trade. Yeah. And then you let it expand. You grow. You learn here. Make all our contacts. Understand our rights. The Sunshine Law doesn't apply to me, doesn't bind me, it binds them. But the minute I can point out their violations, I got them in a pickle. Yeah. I think people should sue them statutorily. You know, the people that have the money, like that video that's that you put up on the webpage, somebody in that area, and I think it's an affluent area. I couldn't afford another lawsuit up here, and they know that. So that's why they keep, they literally told me nine times, sue us, sue us, sue us. So I'm done suing you. Yeah. So that's why I learned a new process, you know? Because I, I got to make sure they pay for all of their crimes and all their harms, okay? But that that school needs to get someone to rise up statutorily, take take them to task because it's still inside of their thirty day window to statutory. There's a statutory limitation of thirty days to file against that school. It has to be somebody in that district. So if it reaches that person, that person should run that. Um, what I do costs me money. It costs money out of my pocket, out of my family's pocket. But I'm going to keep doing it because I'm going to learn. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep learning. I have some people inside of uh, Tunkhannock that donates to me, that helps me. They know there's a pressure. The minute it takes, could you imagine if I got shut down for money? Right. If a million people gave me $1. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot you can do with that. Yeah. I can literally just keep every week, take them to court. Cause like it cost me $75 per 
infraction uh, or per or? Uh, delivery from a constable you know hiring a p a private investigator to get the information i need on each individual that was involved in that so i can get the right people because you got to be factual right because if if i'm if i'm going to be going under oath i need to know all the facts and who that person was to a t get their name spelled right i can't do anything wrong so that costs money so all this background cost keeps getting to me and i can you know, i i truly live a meek enough lifestyle that i'm telling you my wife's going to yell at me for cutting out of work early today yeah because i make my own money by being a contractor but this is important too, because long term, this is going to be good for our grandkids. I'm willing to put this time up. I'm yeah. like everybody else. Everybody else has time, money, or talent. So I got time and I got talent. And the time is whether or not my wife agrees with me having it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Minus your phone number. Yep. I know you, you don't have any titles. You don't have any groups. Is there, as far as contacting you for like, parents who are concerned i would use or, uh, yeah i'm gonna give you my so it's my name the way you spell it right it's g-e-o-r-g-e-y-u-h-a-s-7 at gmail.com so george you has seven the number seven and we'll at, put it up on the screen for people at to gmail.com so um you can use that um I really I, I social want, media I, sucks yeah i want to you can use my uh facebook uh direct message or whatever yeah. direct message me if you want in, inside of facebook i have two accounts one i lost control of because my phone was old and i didn't know how to go and rearrange it so i accidentally created a freaking another account <laughs> and i lost control of this one but it's just sitting out there in the ether and uh that one there is a nice one that has me and my wife uh you know kissing but that's not the good one the good one is a piece of folk art you know, a little painting on the side of a, a barn. Yeah. And that's my, uh, that's Georgia. when you have access to, that's when I have access to, and you can message me there. So, uh, Dan, you got anything to say, Micah? Yeah, man, honestly, just from, from beginning to end, uh, thank you, you know, yeah. thank you, uh, for the, the family legacy of service to our country that mm -hmm. you have. Yep. Uh, and thank you for taking up this fight. Cause like I said, you know, in the beginning, uh, you, Lots of people in this country want to argue the kitty litter in the bathroom. Now, that's the big hot button. I'm more concerned, though, about the constitutional violations yeah. that yeah. led to that decision making process. Yeah. That's going to be what destroys a country, not what books we're talking and about. And that will know? be what fixes the country, too. When, exactly. we, when we can show that stuff, half the garbage leaves the table. Yeah. We're only this arguing. It's a very half fixable of it. situation. Yep. Yeah. And, and it, it's going to take people being brave. I would not put my family in harm's way. Yeah. If I wasn't sure of what I'm doing. It's a winnable fight. Yep. You want to say anything? I had a pretty good bagel this morning, but I guess this really isn't a good time to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> was, it ev was it everything? Uh, it was a sesame bagel. We could talk about it next time, though. Everything's the best one. It had you a really go good schmear on it, a nice thick schmear. <laughs> everything <laughs> toasted used, with a thick schmear. They used uh, the whipped cream cheese. Oh, no, no, no. And so it tastes like you're eating like... Like a mouthful of like meringue. Mir miracle whip. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't dig on that, but it was good. It was a national bakery bagel. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Dan learned fucking nothing. Uh, <laughs> my school board, right? Right now they're searching and seizing. They believe they have the privilege to do this because of some crazy overreach. They create an alarm and they create panic. I originally started this because I noticed that people were taking advantage of alarm, creating alarm where there is none, creating an emergency where there is none. So they can, in fact, then delegate something, create something, make some money, exchange hands, whatever. But in fact, what they're doing right now is they have me banned, but yet all the parents that go into a school board meeting, they're searching and seizing, but not the people going down the hall to this basketball game. This is clearly an intimidation harassment thing. Now, I, I don't know how to say this nicely, but in fact, Try, please. if you want to make bank, go to Tunkhannock Area School Board. Let them turn you away because you don't want to get searched. I promise you what just happened to you is it was extortion. You had to give up one of your rights to redress your government, which is your government. Tunkhannock School District, you're allowed to be there wherever you are in Pennsylvania. You're allowed to be there. And if they don't let you in without extorting one of your rights away from you, like the freedom to be in full papers and, and your being without being searched, they got to have a reasonable, articulate suspicion for a person, not a group of people. You're not throwing us out to the masses. If you read it, so if you use statutory law, they're breaking their statutory law. I think the Fourth Amendment's very clear. The Fifth, it's very clear. You can't do this. So, in fact, we had a lady who went to go in. I don't want to be searched. I want to go to my government meeting. I'm allowed to be in there. Do you have a reasonable, particular suspicion for searching me? No, I don't. I want to go to my meeting. You can't come in. If you don't come in, you're going to get arrested. When she turned away, that was bank. 
when she turned away, that was bank. If she pushed her way through, she now did harm because maybe she mm. dislocated his arm when he fell. When you get turned away, you get that stuff witnessed or videoed. That, that's really, I mean, if you really want a nice practical way of, of, of making this stuff start going away, they think they have it made inside of some 9-11 rule where there's potential terrorists coming in. You still have to follow rules and they're not following them. They have to have a reasonable, articulate suspicion of why they're searching that person. And it can't be just an anonymous tip. It has to be a secondary source that says, in fact, he's carrying a backpack and it looks like there's a barrel sticking out of that. Now you, now you moved on two. So you just have to be willing to stick stick with it, but most people can't do it. You know, they, they, they just walk away and don't follow up. But in fact, if that happens to you, you, you get a hold of me through that and we'll file a claim, you know, for you. So every you. day you're getting smarter. So the next time you come back, you'll be oh, glowing I I from enlightenment. Wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I mean this sincerely from the bottom of my soul. I'm grateful for people like you yeah. in this country because yeah. not a lot of people have, uh, the fearlessness yeah. to do it. Yeah, I don't know where it comes from. I, you know, I can speculate. It might have been because you were, you know, you saw World War Z, and you're like, if I can get through that, a school board ain't that bad. <laughs> my my brother called me. He was worried for me this morning, right? Because of because of that notoriety, you know, he's worried about you know concrete shoes or whatever. Yeah. In Somalia and in in Iraq, it was ten thousand dollars for your head as a U.S. Marine. Now I'm sure that's prorated to today. I don't, yeah. I want that dollar amount, right? So, but but. The, but literally, that was a fear you always had. Like, okay, I don't want to die because- But they're going for me because it's a prize. I don't want to not be there for my buddy. One. Two, their goal was to take your head and send it home to your mother. Now, we don't know that in the public. That, that in fact, is what they try to do all the time. Take pieces of us and send it back so you weren't allowed to go out with mail on you so that they can, in fact, mail your mother your finger. So we used to have to burn all of our papers after we were done. You couldn't go because everybody wanted to carry that last love letter and the mm -hmm. envelope made a mistake. So they would strip us down, make sure we didn't have anything stupid on us because it would just create such chaos and such a reward for them to be able to ship that home. You know, I've had bounties on my head plenty of times like every year. So it doesn't, I'm, I'm not trying to be um, bravado about it, but, but potentially I don't care. I don't care about, you mentioned something about your wife respecting me. I don't care mm -hmm. when I'm on a mission. As a man, I, I want her to be able to trust and believe me and keep pushing me yeah. forward because she's my fuel, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else will be my fuel that keeps shoving me forward, time, talent, treasure behind me because I'm not very good with this. So people help me. So I don't want to do any dishonor or any uh, uh, to my people like that. I guess that's what you're calling respect. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not after respect because people don't understand sometimes. And they think I'm being disrespectful because they don't understand it's the law. Because 900 people are following a stupid thing that's unlawful. Just because I'm trying to stop it doesn't make me disrespectful. Mm -hmm. It makes them not knowing. And I got to try and get a light on this. Yeah. Guys, you know, no, no. Because like, like I told you, when they, when they were all cheering for 504, I'm like, no, guys, stop. One of my biggest proponents that, that helped me set up the 250 people said, sit down, George, I'll take you on the fucking parking lot. Sorry. That's okay. I said that's, fuck before. That's what he's screaming at me. And I'm like, son of a, this is my, he helped me organize this. Yeah. And halfway through it, he's trying to eat me because he doesn't realize he's about to make a concession. You don't make a concession on freedom, period. They were saying, hey, you know, we'll let your kid in school if you do 504. Well, it turns out 504 is really bad because in fact, it puts them, Tunk and Gary right now. It looks like a quarter of the population has a handicap. That's insane. A quarter of Tunkanic's handicap? No. No. That's because of the 504, making everybody have to fill those forms who didn't want to wear a mask. That and then everybody the, who filled out the 504, is that, now, there's now money, forever. there's now revenue getting pumped into the, the high school. You're not getting away. You have to go to court to try and undo that. What parent's going to go to court over that shit? And That's pay to undo ever. Yeah. George Uhas. Uh, founding father. It's very nice to have you here. Um, Dan, you want to say it? What a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's my song. Nice.